hello. You are very welcome to the Overlap Rugby Podcast. I am Dara. This here's Shane. Hello. Two brothers talking all things rugby from the point of view of Leinster and Ireland. Yes, we've got a huge show in store for you this week, previewing the final, the final round of the Six Nations, looking back on a historic weekend that was, there were some incredible games, and we're going to be looking ahead mainly, obviously we'll do the bullet point reviews of all the games that went down, and then we're going to look ahead uh, to this week's brilliant uh, last round, where we'll have our Super Saturday, Ireland gunning for a triple, triple crown, France gunning for a Grand Slam, Irish people throughout the country are going to be cheering for England here's hoping if they get the win over Scotland on Paddy's weekend (laughs) and have to break out the the England jerseys for the evening after I know it's Um, all about Ireland jerseys (laughs) this week and yes happy Paddy's day and Paddy's week too as we're shooting it is Thursday afternoon or morning really that we're doing so happy Hmm. Paddy's day Uh, apologies for that late upload as well but we are going to get to loads of juicy stuff including after that Six Nations going into Rugby Europe where Oh, a, the stakes are so high but we've had massive permutations last weekend when Spain managed to get the big Q next to their name with a, a decisive win over uh, over Portugal in the Iberian uh, p- uh, derby of a game and then Romania also suffered a blow at the hands of old rivals Georgia and are now currently out of position and with some work to do to get themselves back into that qualifying repechage so lots of developments we're going to look back on those games and look ahead to the final round of fixtures in that one as well before we move on from international footy yeah absolutely incredible incredible weekend of rugby in, in, in rugby Europe and now it is all, all boxed in um, but yes we're also going to that's going to be the bulk of the show um, we're a little tight for time here so hopefully we manage to get through all of the kind of bonus stuff that we do looking at the club footy and the under 20s and all of the other things that we like to do and wrapping up with the rugby news of the week you guys will know better than we if we actually manage to do that yes, um, but yeah. we are going to stick in the main of the show obviously Six Nations Rugby Europe it's one more weekend of previews and don't forget of course to like uh, the, the video to subscribe uh, to click the bell so you get notified when we upload again we'll be back of course next Next week with a review of the Six Nations, with a review of Rugby Europe, the dust settling on those two yeah. great competitions, and it has. It's been it's been really fun actually. It this has, year. yeah, no, absolutely. Um, both both competitions have been a, have been top class. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it's been fun sharing the views with you, and uh, yeah, by all means, uh, uh, subscribe to the channel, comment engage the conversation down below all of that stuff helps the channel yeah absolutely and uh, yes yeah, so once again apologies for the late uploads that we're doing we do not like to try and get them out by Thursday but and it is Paddy's day as we're shooting so we're going to try and get all these out before the weekend so they'll be coming to you on Friday that's partly my fault also apologies for the face that you're getting in HD right now had a um, bit of a weekend away that started with getting roughed up and robbed and, and left in a bloody mess so that's this and uh, then ended with missing a flight so that's probably why we're in one day back from the uh, shooting and recording and then editing and yeah. all, exporting of all of this so apologies for that but we will try and get these out uh, out to you anyway that's it poor Shane ah, yeah. I'm not sure he, that's his story that he, that, he was, that he was attacked but I mean he might have just been banging his head against a wall in, in disbelief after that Portugal result that's there was uh, that too yeah yeah <laughs> um, <laughs> listen we're going to without any more ado we're going to tuck in to the meat of the show and we're going to open the show by looking back on a fabulous weekend of Six Nations footy which opened on Friday evening um, we had Wales against France um, 13 points to 9 it finished to Les Bleus uh, on, in the Friday night Millennium Stadium uh, um, uh, game and it was a, a brilliantly compelling game it was yeah. intense it always um, is with these two oh. they just they never really give an inch even when form says that one probably should it's just it's always very tetchy and very tight and yeah w- Wales played a very clever very wily as we've been dubbing them kind of game and a kick heavy approach that worked for large periods and was really well executed for large periods um, but they couldn't really get around or through or over the Edwards defence that was everywhere and was yeah. game for everything they did and then one loose kick albeit very early in the game in that ninth minute loose-ish just slightly poorly executed and allowed France to run back much like Dupont had shown the week before the transition play and they just when yeah. they know it's on it's on and it, it was on in that moment it, and they executed brilliantly for it was, it was, to score it was Jalibert on that occasion who yeah. created the initial line break um, when uh, it was first of all it was a bigger scuff yeah. um, he was going for one of those long spirals which he nailed pretty much every other time other than that one and that kind of set the momentum on its way where Entomac could drill the ball down deep then Liam Williams had to kind of take a rushed kick back and then all of a sudden Jalibert got a one on one matchup beat his man got the offload away to Villiers and straight away they were in the 22 and their offence 
to be fair to them, is no. absolutely beautiful once they get inside that area. They, they, they keep the tempo really high. They work one side, then the other. They have these yeah. powerful ball carriers. And then once the space is there, once the overlap is there, they find it so well. They've, they've done a great job of a, like running deceptive shapes and never throwing a skip pass, putting it through yeah. every set of hands and just yeah, checking they, they the run of like the defense. They look like they're going to shape the, yeah. the, the yeah, missed yeah. pass. Actually, Entomac hit, uh, hit um, Dante a few times with that, where it looks yeah, like do- he's firing over the top and you yeah. just hand it to Dante and it might still get through Dante's hands in a way. It usually That's why does. Yeah, it yeah. usually does. It's just it, when you hit the short runner in, and it's, instead of the wide runner and it looks like it's an either-or situation, you just check the run of the defender back inside to hit the short runner yeah. and then he tips it on. But the skills are, are breathtaking the, the way that they can just execute when they have an overlap. That was classic France. The start was classic France. They took that lead. Yeah. They took the game by the scruff of the neck. But then they probably they showed some wibbles. I mean, they they allowed themselves to get sucked into a Wales kind of a game. Yeah, it, and, it actually played out a little yeah. like some of those Wales England games you'd be watching, where it's like the lineouts were pecked off. The kick tennis in the middle third was where it was where it's happening. Yeah. It was edging three pointers. Poor Wokey, who's been brilliant at lineout time, was getting handled by Will Rowlands of all people, which is probably what what the sign of what an Alan Wynn <laughs> breezing back into camp in the yeah. last week can uh, can do to a lineout like. Wales in the first half were picking off a few of them for fun and then g- generating that scrappy turnover ball, creating ki- opportunities to kick. One or two very nice 50-22s executed as well that uh, that were really telling from Wales. But uh, France were kind of struggling with that that part of the game for, for large yeah, aspects. Yeah, it was, it was like obviously they're away from home, they were struggling, but they definitely felt the occasion. I mean, it was not yeah. what I it was not what yeah, I would like have Aldrich expected. Aldrich dropping balls cold in the first quarter was un, was a surprise. Yeah. Haven't well, seen much of that. Although all if, if Yannick Nianga, who was on BBC punditry, was to be believed, Aldrich had taken ill during the week and hadn't trained. Um, surprising, therefore, right. to see him in the team. To yeah, be considering with, the back row options yeah, exactly. left out, like um, it wasn't all one cast him before and, and all yeah, this. Yeah. Like yeah, um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, you'd think with back rowers, you got to get them. Fits yeah, firing even, even with back row by committee as well, yeah, which is yeah. something that a lot of these top tier teams can do when you have loads of really cutting edge, high caliber players who aren't in the aren't are high in the pecking order but not quite enough to get in. Yeah, if one of them is slightly compromised. But uh, he did he did it was actually a game I was impressed with Aldrich the way he rallied because he started pretty poorly and slowly and he actually did grow into the game a little and grow into the contest, which yeah. is impressive. And I think Francois Cross as well, like yeah. he, he's Starting to fly less under the radar week on week, he keeps making keeps keeps making making awesome plays, (laughs) especially on the defensive end. Um, But that's kind of what we'll touch on with France. I mean, I was surprised at how they allowed themselves to get into the kicking game. And for any team, it's not wise to end up in a kicking game at Wales. They they possibly are the very best at it. Yeah, and they were they did edge that contest. They played pretty much a perfect game inside their own their own 80 metres and I mean, France like bar, bar one or two moments Wales nearly played the perfect game France weren't weren't flawless they weren't under control in this victory by any means oh. but uh, they still had a few really good bailout moments like Gail Fiku was everywhere and yes. dealing, mopping up even loose panic passes that were thrown to him with nothing on other than to try and win a contact and buy mm. some time he did that very well and also some stellar little defensive contributions he's, he's that he always makes Mike her and front runner for player of the tournament to Gail yeah. Fiku himself he was last year, didn't give it to him as well he was stellar last yeah. year he's been flawless nearly he's, for he's, two years he's been Lacanio Amish in his defensive yeah. qualities and that's kind of the, the lead that we're burying on France I mean disappointed I think with the offence disappointed actually in the halfbacks for once just no control yeah. over the game doing things like box kicking off line outs and just yeah. not doing what Ireland did against Wales which was take the kicking game away by running the ball more yeah. Winning and trusting the offence yeah, yeah. and they just didn't do that no. and then um, on the flip side when they were defending they defended them very well that's flawlessly it. that's like, it I mean yeah, this yeah. is why it, it's, not a, it's not a new point it's quite an obvious point but the acquisition of Sean Edwards has just changed this team completely and as good as Galtier has been you felt as, you could get after by like uh, yeah. on phase two after line out they're all slow to fold mm. so just go back here and then it's try and like we've seen loads of those cheap scores scored against France and punishing them for laziness there's, there's no no hint of that with this side there's no way there's no way they'd be in this position without Edwards I mean they, yeah. they just even with all of the talent they have and all of the brilliant players they have you could see some little some mental uh, frailties just in certain areas and in certain moments but not when they're defending they defend so well or they're so well organized they're so physical they're so quick to fold he has them so well drilled and yeah. they, they, there's there's a mixture there's intellect as well as power in there like they defend really smartly yeah. they stay keep their they keep their width they stay in control they kind of tempt Wales into doing the wrong things and, and just and gobbled them up at the breakdown gobbled them up. yeah like yeah. Marchand got mad at the match he was awesome at the breakdown yeah. Dante Movaka in movement but yeah, as well Movaka uh, comes yeah, on yeah, and, like, and then starts looking even more class yeah, yeah. than Marchand they're all insane. a bit tired yeah, yeah. yeah. 
yeah, yeah. yeah no, and they couldn't couldn't really hang and to be fair that's what we've seen from a Wales point of view we've seen that they have such hustle and such heart and smarts and mm. really good kind of players throughout but they're struggling to hang with uh, just the physicality and that breakdown on both sides of the pill they couldn't clear their own rooks effectively which was affecting them against England and against Ireland as well and here it was mm. in Wales in Cardiff against France as well um, but similarly then like they they just like they couldn't quite get it done but my god they were close like yeah, this yeah, is yeah. it like that's the flip side is you could flip this script on its head if you know that that lovely sequence that led to the cross kick it was around 60 odd minutes cross kick to Falatow did who was playing brilliantly did brilliantly to gather oh, flip it inside so Jonathan Davis through the hands and into into Dupont's hands of all things the gift from the rugby gods yeah. that was like that's the kind of ball that you think like all the he's uh, able to take look, that well yeah, he does but like this, that's where Wales were branded lucky last year because those passes just stuck and in they went in a clinical fashion hasn't quite happened for them this year and no. comparatively for France like it like they, they were caught at, caught at odds there they were in the wrong game they were playing probably a poor game at that point and if Wales had scored there and taken a lead who knows there was a lot of time left but uh, instead it ended up in Dupont's hands who put in a great relieving kick and that was the pressure valve released and just probably a seismic moment that was probably the yeah. game there was just oh, that would, moment that was as close um, as they came to scoring and it was it was a it was a bad mistake from Jay it was a lovely kick from Bigger who kicked perfectly yeah, and a great but touch from Falato. Yeah, yeah indeed and Falato was awesome yeah. you just mentioned on both sides of the ball his touch they've, every they've, touch they've was needed, perfect they've needed his um, presence really in that yeah. breakdown like Navidi came back in and hustled as well but he like at one yeah. point he was shrugged off by Dupont and, mm. and kind of they, they need someone like that who's kind of yeah, barnstorming who's, and for the physicality exactly. when you're up against an Edwards defense and just a monstrous yeah, exactly. pack like that. guys like Ross Moriarty who've been in there and Tane Basham like they're they're great hustlers but they do often lose 1v1 matchups in big big moments True. and Falatow didn't he, he won all of his yeah, yeah. Um, and Pivac like it was a perfect game plan they, they, they knew that they were going to be up against it in the offence and so they designed some good kick plays like we talked about that Jay Davis one and I think the loss of Tompkins was huge here as yeah, well like they just great. really hurt them from, from the perspective of being able to run the ball um, but they had a great play in the first half that kind of slipped under the radar where they did a hit up off set piece and then they tried a box kick and this is something that oh, yes, anger most people but they it's tried a box kick on the 22 yeah, yeah. if the kick was on the money Liam Williams was straight through he timed his run perfectly and if the kick had been kind of under the sticks yeah. where I think he meant to put it I think Liam Williams would have taken it and scored but as it was it kind of drifted left of the sticks back to do- towards where the French cover was and I think Williams yeah, still got still a hand 50, to it still 50-50 yeah because <laughs> you know, you're still dealing with that's why yeah. it's not a, not a terrible tactic because tactic, like Jaminet has has been great and, and his, his meteoric rise has been well charted but like even in that uh, Mac Hansen try that yeah, Ireland yeah. grabbed he showed some kind of frailties under the high ball which Liam Williams very much hasn't so kind of trying to dial in those 1v1 matchups especially when when you're going through the phases or traditional multi-phase you're not really getting past four or five before you're either poached or having to kick it away uh, so yeah those, those kinds of variations were just good good tactics from Wales which you always kind of expect in Cardiff just being yeah. game and, and also bringing a little bit of, of smarts to it that you're not going to expect I've been impressed by Wales this year I've oh, been impressed yeah. by PVAC I think they've done a I think they've done a great job rallying after that opening day disappointment and yeah. even though the England game and the France game the results went against them don't think they're too far away no um, I wouldn't say so yeah. Just even they weren't too far away from the pack last year from being on top point of view mm. they were it was all very tight and it still kind of is they're still yeah. well oh, they're still at that table like, yeah, yeah. There, was, there was a lot of unfounded criticism going their way last year of, of like look and this and that when they were just being sharp enough and clinical enough to grab the tries to, to secure the points to get those uh, and put themselves in grand slam winning position on the final weekend but uh, this year obviously they're showing of a few players and it just hasn't quite fallen for them they haven't been as clinical their offence hasn't hummed and they have still struggled to garner some of the possession so they've struggled to just deal with that top top level physicality but even for that they were in this game it's a one score game and they they nearly grabbed the score that could have put it right back into the mix so it's like they aren't that far off and they still have top level temperament and mentality to, to mine from and that's kind of worth its weight in gold it's, it's an intangible but very tangible one it's you know what do you do when the chips are down and, and it's clutch moments and, and Wales normally do rise particularly in that Principality Stadium yeah no question no question so a very dramatic brilliant game of rugby on the Friday oh, yeah. um, but speaking of teams with an excellent temperament 
Scotland took the field <laughs> on Saturday. Yes, uh, they did. They took they were took on Italy in the Stadio Olimpico in Rome. Yes, and it finished twenty two to Italy, thirty three to Scotland. Yes, they did not manage unfortunately to put a point up on the board, the Italians, but they did break your twenty point barrier. They did. That's and I'm this my hat to them for that. As uh, encouraging a performance in at least. Two Three years, I Absolutely. think, from Italy. I would agree um, with that. Like yeah. nothing under Franco Smith was this encouraging. No, it wasn't. Um, like the, the fact that they scored last year, they they managed to score a try in each game rather than not was was something that we were kind of ha- hoping for. But there's the, the sheer concession of fifty points every time is not yeah. going to make that matter, and they still weren't breaking twenty. So it, it wasn't enough really, despite that. And we were humming and hawing all through this season because it's like, is it is it one step forward, two steps back? Because the offense looks looked pants at the beginning of the season and it really did although they were defensively managing to hold teams like France and England to fewer points than we're used to seeing from them but th- this was always, this is always the fixture they target is the Scotland game it's traditionally the wooden spoon off and it's the one that you can see in the Italians play and their focus that it's the one that they fancy having a real crack at regardless of where, where it takes place and uh, this th- this was true again here they, they started to the pitch they arrived grabbed the lead early on defended really well frustrated Scotland from the off and it was Scotland who were the less disciplined side and the less organised side Italy were looking disciplined and organised and ferocious and ready to play for the, for 80 minutes as it turned out this time which is another yeah. rare thing well indeed it, the, the, the reason that they can go longer is because they're dialed in defensively and it's like, it's kind of a lesson because like, we've, we've been critical of teams like Argentina and um, it, a couple of years ago Ireland obviously yeah. Um, and um, England now recently there's a huge the pitchforks are out for them and their offense and then Italy this year but to be fair like when you're building a team when you're building a team you do have to start with a foundation and I think consistently teams that, that get their P's and Q's in order on defense and set piece can then build an offense yeah. and that kind of is where you should start in terms of developing a team and it has helped Italy like they, I, Kieran Crowley they look much better coached than they did they last do. year Franco Smith was kind of just like an offensive coach they didn't see they weren't dialed into defending at all it's they're true. so dialed into it now they're staying connected yeah. and, and they're making good Captain tackles a good, good hustle monster to yeah, have yeah. in that kind of role as well to get La Passion going and get get after those but Scots it's, and they it's, are it's more than La Passion like oh, they're, they're thinking about defending and, and it, they, it, they're having success they're keeping they their spacing really well staying connected and forcing teams to attack them on the inside making inside shoulder tackles consistently yeah. and, and they have some great well. guys so on the post some of the, some of the, uh, the tackle highlights this year of just the hits they've put in it's against even top level teams it's night and day versus different. the soft shoulder soaking or missing that we were accustomed to seeing over the last 10 plus years from Italian teams yeah. and yet there was still a little bit of this I mean some of the Scotland breakout tries you can point to like if you're only watching the high, you're George, like, George Turner Turner's sitting down Braley that was funny yeah but that was, <laughs> it's a two and a half back as well yeah, but yeah. like some of them have like little bad missed tackles but that didn't tell the full story they were frustrating Scotland for large periods and Scotland were buying into it for large periods and getting duly getting frustrated and yeah. vindicating the game plan very much until moments of sparkling quality particularly from Ali Price but from others as well actually managed to unpick uh, a very robust or, or decent Italian uh, defensive effort and find some some nice tries and moments of quality that, that did separate them out like there was it was 33 points well scored by Scotland but yeah, they, they did got, have to work they did they yeah. did they managed to bust up a, bust them up they got a scrum try but they also got a kick return try and intercept yeah. try and what separated them like what, what made them all happen was the hunger of the support work yeah um, they, they ran excellent support lines and they did find their flowing offense they did. Um, to, to, see, nice to see them as well. That, that scrum play that actually I think it was one of Harris's tries yeah, that yeah. was just classic Scotland neatness off the base of a five meter scrum and it's just two centers running hard and short the three distributors peeling around the side and then options they, they, hit the right man they do that try. better than anybody They're really they really do, yeah, they do yeah. that as well Ex- as except when it's in like the last three minutes of a half <laughs> for all the marbles against France they'll do it beautifully against Italy or for the bonus point score that's the issue we're talking about yeah, the temperament yeah. and the intangible qualities that uh, that are there but yeah no there were still like great moments Ali Price I thought was stellar for them yeah um, it was 50, like, 50 up wasn't it cap wise or? yeah 50 up for Price and, and sticking some sumptuous passes and pulling little Dupontish evasive manoeuvres from the middle third but like possible uh, like just chagrin in uh, in Scottish camps in that it was Ali Price sticking like oh probably a combined 60 metres over two the course of two passes with lovely fizzers off the right hand to find 
was it uh, on the left wing? Hoggy um, found for one. Well, it was yeah, Hoggy found for one. That was that was very nice in the second yeah. half, and then the the first one that was Harris's try from the kick back inside found a winger as well yeah, on the money. Yeah. That was the pick that should have been the pick the other way. Actually, Italy picked off a pass from Russell, went a few yeah, phases. Giovanni got some go for it. The Brady pump fake and then throw it to that Price and oh, huge yeah. fourteen point moment, massive in the game. swing in the sticks game. That pass, yeah. then it's a, a different game. But but, also, but it, Italy have confidence in their offense now. They built that base layer. And now they're started. They've got solidity at set piece in this game, which was huge. Yeah, true. And then they were able to launch, and they had a great try of their own, breaking blind off a scrum, yeah. finding uh, the winger Bruno, who found the ball back inside. That was that was a very and neat try. They have a strike play all of their own. Very well done, Bruno, to dance back yeah, in. Well, yeah, exactly. But like a little little strike plays off set piece are where an offense begins. Yeah, Brayley Padovani, I think see. that loop was. Padovani played pretty well on the offensive yeah. side and as then, well. Yeah, uh, Capuozzo, who comes on. This is it. This little lad, this child-looking person. He was, but, he was uh, great. He was, was awesome. exciting everywhere. And yeah, if you get more guys like that in with... Cut, like that, that One of his tries was really nice, but and, and a nice assist for... Uh, like, one, one, like, was it one he just got over in the corner? But the second one was probably the loveliest set I've seen from Italy all season, where yeah. it was just started, as it always does, with Ioanni kind of getting them some go forward. But then a lovely sequence of interplay, and it was at 82 minutes. Like, mm. you never see Italy up and game at 82 minutes, but here they were. And, like, Lamaro had a lovely little inside ball, and then Ruzza, who's, like, never seen him look so effective, but he trundled nearly all the way to the line, and then a very well-executed pass to find on debut two tries in and in the corner yeah. uh, Capuzzo 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 Grenoble born and bred but he's a young he's a youngster and he's uh, he's exciting, all class and exciting, exciting machine. Yeah. element to add to this so yeah they, they do have promise Italy it remains to be seen how much it'll show I think they're still firmly a tier 2 team but this was yeah. a, this was a very impressive tier 2 performance against a tier 1 team and, and that's kind of what we always hope to see yeah. so fair play to Italy in that one and fair play to Scotland as well for getting their 5 tries oh, they got the 5 the tries they, they, the tries um, were very pretty actually yeah. As well, and like actually, the another good skip pass for the opening one to find was it uh, who was on the corner there, Sam Johnson as well. Um, yeah, no, they, they took some very well, like high, well crafted and well executed scores in this one, and yeah, shades of what might have been about those two Ali Price on the money passes that could have been for that moment in, against France if Harris had just fed him, but. You know, it's water under the bridge and now at this point and Scotland are two and two, still slightly frustrated and they're gonna to head to Dublin with a big task to, task now, but they've managed to arrest some momentum from this one, I guess. And then a little bit scruffy and scrappy as well. They're not fully happy. I think Italy will be happier with their performance levels and just what they managed to accomplish. And I think yeah, yeah, twenty-two points, albeit no table points, it's marked improvement on where they were last year, where our frustration was that we were literally watching the same game. They were meeting all five teams and it was fifty something to ten or a seven yeah. and it's it's improved from that and the picture's changed so well done well done Italy for that well done Italy indeed um, very impressive performance um, but then we moved on to the late game on Saturday evening in Twickenham yep. and yeah it was England 15 Ireland 32 yeah. boom it was a happy boom. Paddy's day and, you know <laughs> four try brilliance it was great um, yeah. I mean listen the, I, there's been a lot it's been a, a, a talking point heavy match uh, it does open with a, with a decisive moment from uh, from Charlie Ewell's yeah, 82 really, seconds really the sloppy match. game uh, or sloppy sloppy tackle yeah. but it was born of and it was the man didn't have the ball it was born of the fact that Ireland just started with intent and it was a really good attacking drive they were putting together deceptive passes good sequence and Ewell's just got himself a little upright kind of ball watching and the ball was gone and then he cracks uh, cracks yeah. Ryan in the head doesn't doesn't adjust engages um, in head to head is upright in the contact zone it's just really sloppy technique yeah, um, yeah you've got to mind your body better than that and to be fair to England like for the rest of the game they tackled like they they tackled ferociously and legally for yeah, the rest of the game like did. Sam Simmons was a tackling machine out there oh, and he was the, doing those the hit he put in on Tyg Furlong yeah. that lifted him up the air and Furlong had, had got over the game line was probably wrong to throw one of the many offloads that yeah, went astray yeah. but it was a stellar effort from Simmons but you're right no they they, they did dial in as often happens this is why I'd, I don't like the refrain of red cards ruin games they sometimes do decide matches but uh, that this was a crack and test match almost as a result of the red card like England are galvanised and defiant and the 60, like levelling the game at 60 minutes and then it's all back in the melting pot and uh, yeah the drama was no le- no lesson for it and it was fully legal like the ref had no choice it was 
sloppy technique. It was he- clear head to head, so it was a red card, albeit there's no context of where it's like it's ah yeah. oh it's only a couple minutes into the game. Can he come back after twenty minutes? It's like no, he can't. That's uh, yeah. that's just not the way it works. It was very illegal and it was a, a cheap shot. And yeah, like the the fact of it was like England did lose, go down to fourteen men, but. Ireland lost James Ryan, and uh, that was pretty telling too. Because well, the, the pack that they ended up playing with England, uh, which was uh, uh, Genge, George, Sinclair, Laws, Itoji, and then a back row of uh, of uh, well, Simmons, Curry for Curry, Curry for a bit, and Noel and on Noel, the side, and the right. where he loves to be anyway. Curry um, came off, and and, and Don Brand came in, yeah. uh, and and like it was just it was a very effective forward pack. Nice. I mean, Noel, yeah. Noel living up to the hybrid seven talk that that uh, that that uh, Eddie Jones is giving him constantly, yeah. but that tight five was was arguably more effective than it would have been with Ewells. Yeah. Um, I did see Sky Sports did a write up of the game, and, and and they did their player ratings after the after the fact, and they gave Ewells a four. <laughs> Someone was pointing out on Twitter, "Is like, what exactly does it take to get a three? Yeah, I if you're going to get a four for getting <laughs> sent, off sent off after eighty two seconds, after eighty two seconds, and <laughs> arguably, like maybe his second contribution, maybe he tackled a guy before, but." Geez, some of these ratings. I don't yeah. know. No, that's. I don't know if any England fan would agree with that. I think no. they'd be blaming blaming you for large parts of it. Because yeah, there were a few stories uh, with that. The set piece obviously is a massive talking point. There was yeah the criticisms on either side, like people saying that there was technical infringements on the engage from England that were letting them get away with this. What I was seeing was that we were missing the fact that we picked James Ryan and, and Big Ian Henderson was with a mind to this is a big England pack. We struggle with mm-hmm. when we picked Ty Byrne in there to, to hold them. We're also missing Porter. We have Keen Healy on one side. We're going to be trying to hold this together. And mm-hmm. then we lost James Ryan as a result of that collision. Uh, collision. And... Yeah, the power differential was such that Ireland were just getting minced. There was good technique going on. There were there was definitely dark arts in the front row, but I don't think you can blame a ref, and it's a French ref in question, for allowing them to take the hit for all kinds of kinds of kind of adjusting going on and then just letting the scrum play out. That's something that like Nigel Owens has come out and criticized the decision, but he never did. Like there's a no, lot of yeah, I, there's I a lot of refs who like wait like see a scrum go forward and say like, oh no no, you're binding wrong. And even though you're seeing that a scrum is clearly dominant. And, and um, it pre- pressure is what makes this happen. Exactly. And there's been there's yeah, been yeah. a lot of kind of sideshow commentary mm. on oh how like there's this impression that the scrums are you know, you just engage and it's an ordinary pushing battle and then if someone does something different automatically the scrum is going to be disintegrate through no fault of your own, um, if, if that makes sense. And then like so you, you get your classic example of, of what people think they're seeing is like watching maybe Soani Tongoia scrummage ten years ago where he used to literally step up and into the hooker and it was just ridiculous. Like he, he of course was being illegal. But that's not really what was happening here. If you if you take a look at the overhead shot even of the scrum Ireland were square, England were square, they set, and Genge straight away got on top of Furlong, and what ended up happening was Genge, Genge was in an advanced position compared to his hooker and, and then, tight head. And then the power um, came from behind, and yeah, then but forward was, they go. The, the, like, power, yeah. the power did come from behind, and they do have an excellent engine room themselves. Mm-hmm. Not that Ireland don't, but I think the, um, the, the, the issue, what happened, the reason that the scrums were wheeling is because on that engage, Furlong was being put under incredible pressure. He ended up behind his hooker and his loose head, and that's why the scrum is going to turn. But it's born of pressure, and it was like you can argue about all this, this these hijinks about oh, you can't scrummage this way and that way, and you know, if you jimmy your arm a little, then you're tugging, and that's illegal, and really you can just push straight. And it's like, I think Brian Nujadi put it best and say they say you should scrum straight, but the good props never do. Yeah, like pe- people overcomplicate this. It's kind. Of, it's a wrestling match, yeah. and like within the within the bounds of reason, as in not like yanking the, the thing down yeah. or picking someone up and driving in or shifting you are your body from to, over to under to hoist a guy. Yeah, up, I mean, which that's, sometimes you that's, see. that's kind of a yeah. key and Healy maneuver yeah. that he's done. But like you, all, you always see that kind of wrestling play out, and it's interesting um, in terms of how they how they manage to hustle around a certain situation. Someone's putting pressure. Do they change their angle this way to kind of settle things? But I think it's it, it's most interesting and most engaging when it plays out on the field in terms of Ty Furlong was put in a tough position. Genge was getting on top of him. He has to solve that problem, yeah. and he didn't. He got yeah. absolutely destroyed time and time again at that scrum. Ellis Genge, it was a worldy of a performance. It was the yeah. best, one of the best loose head performances I've seen in years. Yeah. As a Leinster fan, I always go back to a game actually that Leinster lost 
back in the Matt O'Connor era when they played Toulon and it was Carl Heyman then who was all, one of the all time great tight heads of course and Keen Healy destroyed him in a very similar way it did. and that yeah. was one of the great loose head performances I ever remember watching but this was right up there from yeah. Genge I mean to take on someone as highly touted as Furlong and as tough and as physical as Furlong and just get after him time and time again and leave him in a position where he just can't solve the problem it's true um, I think that was I think, I that think was it was stellar and it was yeah. a great equaliser for England that rallied them around because yeah. they, obviously they were down for, down a man against a top level team when the margins are so small it was ultimately a decisive factor in the game but that scrum that dominant set piece as well like Atoji's dominance in the air and the line out as well yeah. really did create an equaliser in that and that's where you could see them manage to creep back into the game because Ireland were just so struggling with getting first foot phase ball struggling to do anything at set piece they were struggling to get their own line out going they were not getting anywhere near England's line out and it was just allowing England to kind of edge themselves into territorial gains into three pointers into just starting to accrue a bit of points on the board and, and apply some pressure but the other real difference as well as obviously 15 v 14 is just the the attacking prospects and the danger that uh, that England were able to create e- albeit with 14 men but just even the endeavour of their attacking sets was just in stark contrast to what Ireland were doing even from that opening whistle where you saw that lovely attacking sequence that led to the red card but also subsequent to it like James Lowe's opening try beautiful recognition of space they, they ran that from their own 22 it was like it yeah. was in their own 22 whiskey to a pullback pass from Furlong out the back the, through the two centres and then out to the, the wide men who were Van der Fleer and Sheehan and just up they scampered up the touchline back in field England over committed at the subsequent rook recognised go back to short side and really good interplay between the forwards and the backs to find low on the edge and it's just that level of ambition as well as skill albeit it did it did cost Ireland at times when they were getting last pass syndrome and dropping a load of balls which was creating scrums which was creating penalties and territory and that's where we were getting frustrated as Irish fans but four tries to nil was reflective of just the ambition and the danger in the offence yeah no question Um, and we did see probably the the headline from like from a point of view of a defence looking to looking to solve the problem with the Irish offence um, I think it's clear that the number one weakness is turnovers yeah. if you can attack the ball I think if ESPN stats had it at 17 turnovers to between handling errors especially, and especially when you combine jackals. the fact that it's going um, to going to result in penalties be it from a jackal or yeah. from a drop from a scrum <laughs> from a penalty <laughs> yeah, and exactly. like, that's so it's tough mm-hmm. that's where you end up 15 all despite being up a man <laughs> and at 60 minutes and going what the hell is going <laughs> on exactly it yeah. was very expensive but like in years gone by, even with the extra man, an Ireland team would have lost this game. Being yeah. bullied up front to the extent that they were not having a set piece platform, not being able to dominate the collision area. Yeah. It was great to see them away from home in a hostile environment in Twickenham stick to their process, True. relentlessly trust their system, even though things hadn't been working. Yeah. Sexton stayed on the pitch for eighty minutes, ran yeah. the show really well. Every touch from him was a good one, and they just they just found enough uh, momentum in in some key sets to find to find the two tries. And it was great that they managed to find two tries at the end as well. Yeah. There was a little freeze framed moment that someone had on seventy two after Ireland had scored that try to kill the game and make it twenty five fifteen. Yeah. And said they get a penalty on halfway, and Sexton's telling them all one more. We need one more. Yeah, yeah. We need one more for the table, and like because they had they had to get that bonus point try. Yeah. And they and went there for them, and they yeah, went down and got it. No, that was great and like to be fair they, they dealt with that last set very 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 well and that was like they actually managed to get a set piece mm. off because their mall managed to trundle a bit before yeah. Lowe was hit up actually Murray I, I've, Murray and all of the subs Henshaw as well I've actually never I've been critical of the Irish bench to be honest in the 23 man game and in Ireland talking about finishers or yeah. Eddie Jones talking about finishers or whatnot. I think sometimes we get it quite wrong where you see the 60 minute mark and we're going okay and then the subs come in and it gets a bit unstuck and then there's Irish commentators are going like ah it's to be expected you know the bench comes in and, and then everything goes to pot and it's like <laughs> no that's not to be expected yeah. the bench comes in and then it accelerates and we go to the finish and that's actually what happened here is that England yeah. were heroic in the way that in their efforts all the way to the at 60th minute because they were up against it but they were just dogged and determined and like Maro Itoji was causing problems everywhere including that moment that could like could have been it was looking like we were cruise control bonus point going to be not in the doubt when Doris was skittling uh, poor little Randall and going yeah. over in the corner but backed for Itoji for that playing of the arm on Ringrose just a good little subtle play he's in the rook he's onside you're allowed to play the arm you're not allowed to play the ball so I have no issue with that people were saying should it be a card it's like no and that was a massive momentum switch because that was the first of the scrums that was the Gen show yeah, that yeah. set the tone for the next 40 odd 50 odd minutes of game time and that's a huge play from a leader and like you say Itoji's not captain material I look at a play like that and I'm like 
that's that's what he's doing. <laughs> it told, it told um, you was incredible again. England were yeah. incredible again. But fair play to Ireland for, yeah. for for using their offense, the footballing skills of their forwards to make up for the fact that they were getting blown away yeah. physically. They used and their fair football guys skills. like Furlong and Sheehan um, who were up against uh, their bread and yeah, butter. And, and, and like Furlong doing, stayed out there. Yeah. He played seventy minutes. He outlasted Genge despite being done at the scrum. So that was that was very impressive from him. Yeah. It was a very impressive performance from Gibson Park catching England on the quick tap like they always get yes, caught on the quick that tap. Was they were whinging was, about that again because it was like, oh, it's Sinclair was hurt. It's like, well, he, if you don't go quick enough, the ref's not going to notice. No, exactly. You need to be defending. The, the, like the, yeah, the, ref, yeah. the ref probably should have stopped the game, yeah. but it, that's that doesn't mean that doesn't mean it's not a horrendous mistake for England to make, especially yeah, when you consider how often it happens. Yeah, that's that's the main vice. <laughs> yeah. It's like, how do you keep conceding <laughs> yeah, that try? And then go, it's not fair. And you watch like, France against, against Wales, just deal with that threat yeah. from Wales every yeah. single time. It's true. And it, England just didn't do it. But uh, Gibson Park was great. One man of the match kept a great tempo, but then Murray comes in as you say and has for. Conan's try his best offensive really set, defensive set. Like and actually even for the, the yeah. subsequent try off the mall he kept yeah. it in the mall just right and then hit low on that short line and then one pick in jail oh, and there's if, bonus points if he can play like yeah. that if he can play like that he can still be an asset to this team yeah. like that was very very exciting for it's Murray true. It's true. Um, but uh, yeah. similar to actually Keaton, uh, Hugo Keenan, uh, yes. I know Rob Carney was singing his praises. Might have he didn't get man of the match, but might have been his best showing. And he'd been like patchy in his form because he was stellar last year. He'd had a few little rough games in this one, but he was all over the place. Yeah, he was awesome brilliant. in the aerial game, the little yeah. counter attack offload down the side, yeah, the little get, delay better of offensively for, yeah, yeah. for that uh, Conan try. The little the way he delayed the pass and then pulled Noel out of position and then fed, fed Ringrose, who fed Conway. It was that's what created the try. It was very next phase, and it's yeah really good to see that that uh, kid just maturing into a really really assured player at fullback yeah. and yeah uh, yeah by comparison actually Freddie Stewart who's been great for England probably had a bit of a rough day here yes yeah. he was made look a little silly a few times and was chasing chasing shadows on a few occasions which is always it's always gonna be a tough being a fullback when you're down to 14 men like the task is so so hard then but it was a it was a rough outing for some of those some of those English backs out there but take yeah. nothing away from Ireland I think like it was a great test match to be honest and I think bonus point win record breaking bonus point win in Twickenham was deserved as well ultimately because oh, that's it you got it's a bit like Wales last year people bitching oh no you played against 14 oh you got dominated up front but to be to credit Ireland their offence is more effective perhaps even than France's it might be the most effective offence in this in this competition they're the one side in the competition who are consistently running the ball from the midfield they instead are, of kicking and from their 22 they're having success they're like, that was yeah, it. Yeah. the opening try came from yeah. their 22 it was yeah, great yeah. to see like we haven't seen a side or sound of that in the last few years from uh, men in green and it is great to see it and even like I'm not going to go in for last pass syndrome which is where <laughs> you know I was frustrated at the time when Furlong's winning contacts but throwing the ball away or when you're yeah, going you're right up, they'll but, tidy that yeah, up but like you can't expect them to revolutionise an offload game and hope that everything sticks and no. to be honest as much as it's it's a mistake to, to scuff an offload it is no like and it's a common adage in uh, in an Irish rugby clubs all across the board that's like if in doubt just take it into contact it's safer there and it's like it's not safer in contact you're actually I'd rather see us throw the offload even yeah. if it goes to deck try no, it's, and it's, keep, it's, keep it's, the ball alive it's, it's not as it's, a dropped offload is a, is a better mistake than a missed two on one yeah or yeah, yeah, yeah just yeah. trucking into yeah. contact when the ball the try is over there like that's that, that's a worse uh, more grievous error and we're not really making those as much anymore and getting just rewards four tries yeah uh, and from England's point of view they, they'll have regrets because like they did well to get themselves back to level, but particularly that one to kick them back to level where they just won a scrum penalty on the 22 and it was 60 minutes. You're going to start flagging soon because you've been playing for 14 men. You have a dominant set piece. You've got to pull the trigger sometime. Yeah, they scored no tries. But when they're running um, no ball, yeah. they're, 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 not, they're not running the ball at all. Yeah. Um, they're, the only they're doing for, pressure, tr- for five or seven yeah. is with a maul or with yeah, a scrum or got, with something. They're going to um, have to turn down some threes because they are not going to win games kicking just threes. And that's a mistake they've made now a couple of times in this championship. They're going to have to They're going to have to get better offensively. They're going to have to kick some corners and generate some five-meter scores. Yeah. It's very vitally important. Especially that they when like I told you line. was supreme in the area. He was yeah. dominating. They, had they just, they just ball. W- wouldn't trust um, them, wouldn't give them a chance to go from five out. And it would have been huge if they had found a try on 60 meters instead of kicking to go 15 all if they got down there and found a try the lead. then all of a sudden it really is on Ireland in a way that it wasn't and yeah, after, well, after, Ireland, after they leveled Ireland, that Ireland game took the lead like three minutes later yeah. with a kick and then punished them a few minutes yeah. after that with a try and that was ice in the game and it's like like yeah. as much as it feels like it's we've now we're level there's almost like a pressure valve relief for, relief from both teams where England are going finally we made it back level yeah. and then you start realising 
he's like I'm tired it is yeah, it is an hour of play now and we've been <laughs> down a man and then suddenly Ireland are still attacking from everywhere yeah. and it was yeah the, di- the difference in ambition and effectiveness of the offensive sets of is the difference between the White teams was, right was now the difference for this season at least as well as four team men and unfortunate for you but uh, still a cracking test match and really entertaining footy on uh, on Saturday yes indeed and well done Ireland they yeah. won that game claimed a bonus point and set up a triple crown decider this weekend yeah, leaving the um, table looking like this um, yeah which is bunched and tight obviously only France only label with a grand slam and nothing else really on their mind nothing else will do as much yeah. as far as they're concerned but 18 points Ireland who have been gobbling bonus points for fun very well grabbing one against Wales grabbing one over in Twickenham as well they put themselves yeah, they've had a bonus. they've drift. had a bonus point in every game yeah it's they've, awesome. had, they've had three, three bonus points for, for a win and then one for a loss yeah um, really good, uh, good, good stuff because it puts them in, in a that, great position. Puts yeah. them in that position to take the lead going into the final game and and, and see what happens. And, and, you know, know, if, and France yeah. will know that if Ireland manage just even just a win in in their game against Scotland, that even a, loss, a draw a draw, a draw won't, won't even do, do it yeah, for them. That's right. So um, that's that's what the luxury they're they're afforded with that. But uh, it's still France in the driver's seat. Uh, England then adrift further adrift at uh, ten points with uh, with Scotland just behind on ten as well. Wales on six with uh, Italy on zero. So uh, yeah, unfortunate for Wales to find themselves running up the rear. Or but they haven't played the Italy bottom. yet. To be they fair have yet them. to play Italy, so they have a chance to to kind of amend some they of could, that and they jump can up. finish as high as third. They could um, jump up on the last day. It's been like as much as a title defence. You want to kind of be closer than that. It's been such small margins, and from the opening day when they got blasted by Ireland, it was always going to be tough. So yeah, we said it at the top of the. Uh, uh, we said it many times throughout, but there there isn't a huge pile between these teams. Ireland and France have taken a little bit a step ahead of the other three yeah. but would anyone be really surprised by the three of them closing that gap in next year not, not by, you know like Scotland yeah. grabbing a scalp or England grabbing a scalp you know it's Absolutely. not unprecedented nor yeah. is it uh, that shocking when it does happen but no. uh, yeah, it's a very very good competition but with France and Ireland the two who are duking it out uh, jostling for a position on the last day on Super Saturday yeah no question um, but we are going to look now ahead to the weekend's games and it is Super Saturday this weekend all games taking place on the Saturday March 19th yeah. and it opens as is traditional with the Italian game it's going to be sort of the, the dead rubber match the bottom of the table clash between Wales and Italy in Cardiff kicking off at 2.15 um, Andrew Brace has taken the taken the game from the referee with Carly and uh, Trainini from France on the on the sidelines and Joy Neville of the RFU in the TMO box there you go um, Yeah, um, total dead rubber in the context of the tournament I mean it's not even really a wooden spoon comp because Wales are on 6 so so Italy have already sewn that one up they have um, there is a bit of colour from a Welsh point of view obviously Alan Wynne Jones we were touting last week he was back in and suddenly their line out is picking off French yeah. line outs but now he's back in in another sense in that he's going to come back for another milestone yet another milestone for them yeah, I'm, I'm surprised by that I must say but he's, he's back he's back in it's 150 test appearances for um, for the great Alan Wynne Jones, which in this era, in any era, and in lock, just <laughs> extraordinary yeah. stuff. Um, yeah. I was seeing some stats on him that he was the best uh, tackler in, in 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 world rugby history. He's made more tackles than, than anybody, anyone. which is well, unsurprising. Yeah, that's what happens when um, you spend 149 <laughs> games at lock? Yeah. Um, um, someone was pointing out, I think a couple of well, Welsh people. It was kind of doing the rounds on, on Welsh Twitter that actually Alan Wynne Jones's career milestones. Have gone pretty badly. Uh, yeah. His his first cap was a twenty seven twenty five loss to Argentina. Mm. Um, his fiftieth cap was a defeat to England in a World Cup warm up. His hundredth cap was a was a away defeat to New Zealand. Um, his two hundredth Ospreys cap was a loss to Leinster. He, when he got the Welsh cap record, he lost to New Zealand at the World Cup. Um, when he got the international national cap record with um, uh, the, including his Lions appearances. Um, he lost a 14-10 at home against Scotland yeah. um, in his first match as the Lions tour captain he was seriously injured after 8 minutes Yes. Uh, in the, and when he got the international cap record for one team that was just last autumn they had that bad loss against the All Blacks as well so he hasn't had many milestone days go his way that's true, um, that's true. Not they'll be hoping to so some, some <laughs> end up like that hopefully he can amend yeah. that here on 150 and, and pull up a good one that's certainly what they're, they'll be hoping for because uh, 
yeah, it would be very shocking precedent if this Italy game model is ultimately went uh, against them as well. But good luck to Alan Wynne Jones. Dan Bigger as well is going to pull up uh, the century. Um, century for well. Wales, yeah, it's, it's yeah. A, that's awesome um, from from Dan Bigger. What a yeah. servant he's been, and who leads them out? I mean, yeah, this it's is interesting. Maybe you send both of them out, but I, I don't know who's technically captain. I don't know. Alan um, Wynne will probably be captain. Yeah, yeah. Do, but um, they, they, I'd say the, 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 two, the, two anyway. them, the two of them, the two of them, together um, yeah. for to to raucous applause. Absolutely, yeah. um, two legends of Welsh rugby for sure, and with a, a bit more to give it seems to, to the red jersey and um, for really this this game is more just about some putting something together on the back of a positive performance a rare enough positive showing against one of these big guns in the six uh, nations and having a cut at uh, you know this Wales team that have been stuttering a little bit seeing if that, that defensive cohesion can cause Wales some problems because Wales have been struggling on the offensive end themselves so there's little tactical stuff that you can get into and try and try and be competitive for yeah, at least some of this match they'll, they'll, fancy, they'll fancy their foundations has given them a chance to, to, to have a cut for, for, for 60 minutes at least and just keep 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 going moment by moment yeah and that definitely is the goal for Italy we'd love to see them get a point on the board um, of any kind uh, yeah no it's uh, true in, in some kind Nations of point table. four tries is my dream point for them yeah. but uh, you know I'm still dreaming I was close last week <laughs> <laughs> yeah indeed um, we are going to look at the game from the point of view of each team starting with the hosts which of course is Wales yeah um, obviously they've uh, shown their class in moments throughout this year's campaign but uh, it was always going to be a challenge after the start in Dublin yeah. and uh, they just haven't been able to, to accrue the necessary points in some big games despite playing pretty Pretty well, yeah. No, it's been um, a disappointment, but definitely not doom and gloom from from a Welsh campaign point of view. Like t- obviously, title defenses, you want it, you want to be in the mix towards the end, and it's not going to happen. But they were probably aware of that after that opening weekend in Dublin, and just after like the autumn that was and the summer that was, they kind of they were struggling for form and uh, pretty severely going into that, and they found a team that were pretty much in form and got their challenge pretty scuppered early doors um, but since then they've grown throughout this competition and they're undoubtedly in a better stronger position now than they were when they ended 2021 and yeah. they're going to look to try and keep that momentum a bit with a with a win against Italy yeah, and a home and, win for the fans and, and, and a big tour to come yeah. away in South Africa exactly. not going to be easy doesn't make it easier but um, you want to carry a little bit of form and a little bit of positivity into that so some, some nice tries here would certainly be on the cards for that 100% they have named their team Wales it was yeah. rife with changes as we mentioned um, so uh, uh, unfortunately Ryan Elias had to, had to make way so Dowie Lake comes in at hooker they've stuck with Gareth Thomas and Dylan Lewis as the other two props with Wynne Jones to come on yeah. Adam Beard and Alan Wynne Jones reunite as second row partners unfortunately yeah. that means that Will Rowlands drops to the bench after his best ever performance in a Wales jersey That's true. Uh, yeah. but a bit of strength off the bench is no bad thing and they maintain that back row of Seb Davies Josh Navidi and Tulupi Faletau um, which was very very impressive it looks last like their form well. back row at the minute for sure um, then this is where it gets interesting there's changes in the back line no Liam Williams uh, crucially did, did he um, take a knock or is he um, on the bench he's not on the bench no, so I imagine he took a possibly knock. a knock of some yeah. kind alright um, they've also given Garrett Davis the nod with Dan Bigger they brought Willis Halaholo in at 12 instead of Jay Davis yeah. Um, with Owen Watkin at 13 they've got uh, Reese Reese Samet back in instead of Cuthbert with Josh Adams on the wings and Johnny McNichol comes in yeah, at fullback still a good as we were um, saying at the, t- the height of the tournament like with this Wales squad you can't really name a poor back line out of, out of the guys in the squad you nope. can do any kind of mix and still and make a very effective s- one some promising impact on the bench between Will, Wynne Jones Will Rowlands Ross Moriarty Kieran Hardy and Nick Tompkins <laughs> yeah, actually even Callum Sheedy can run a bit of offence against some tired bodies as well try and get them going yeah, yeah. no there's definitely good quality I suspect change at halfback was forced because obviously poor um, was it uh, Thomas Williams. Williams got cracked by a Dante shin with yeah. his head on the wrong side of a contact against that that bulldozer is yeah. not going to end well for a halfback so maybe he's uh, he's not available to select but again Wales at halfback it, you can't really go too much wrong they don't it's a kind of a horse not really horses for courses they're kind of all similar mold of players and they'll try and provide tempo off well, the base well one thing that I think is interesting about this side is that it is not a side that's appears to be built to do what Wales have been doing which is playing a very kick heavy approach yeah. to position themselves in the red zone but basically plotting their way around the field using the likes of Liam Williams using Thomas Williams at times and of course Dan Bigger, right, bigger to, yeah. to work their way downfield win the kicking exchanges and then ultimately uh, win the territory I'd battle say we'll see um, only a little bit of this but I'd say they're going to try and take on this Italian well it offense. looks like it I mean yeah. it, it, Johnny McNichol for Liam Williams is not a like for like it's a no. running it's a running team and Willis 
Hollow as well. Hollow and, like, yeah, yeah. It, it, it seems like much more like a team that wants to run the ball. Garrett Davis wants to run the ball. Yeah. Um, but then that raises the question of like their offense hasn't been that effective and they are up against a defense that, that has been, been pretty, pretty damn pretty good effective. and very yeah. good at turning over the ball. Yeah. I think um, they're going to make the argument and maybe they have a case here and maybe they're right that uh, there's levels to this game and mm-hmm. that their offense ain't that bad. It's just they're running into you know Sean Edwards, France and, and Ireland's defense and actually Italy while being much improved might struggle with our offense that's certainly yeah. what it, it reads to me because they picked that team very early in the week as well and uh, yeah, it reads to me like they're going to they have to have to bring a, a hard edge to what they're doing in attack like, and they're, an they're, accuracy they're, to they're, the they're, offensive clean out as well they struggle yeah. with the offensive clean out too often and guys mm. like Lamaro will get in there and will get a poacher and Lucchesi like, yeah, yeah, this like, has been constant from the Italians yeah. in, in every game they've, they've maintained their width, width really well but because they're pretty well spaced that does leave a seam between players does. and that's where you want to see guys like Falatau or Willis Halaholo picking lines off the distributing uh, player cutting hard angles through the defence to kind of sit them down and then you can work with quick ball off that but they've, they've missed that to be honest this year they've been a little lateral and hence their passing game hasn't really worked at all true. and yeah. they've, they've really leaned on their kicking game to gain any kind of offensive purchase they actually they, you need to have that kind of hard line hitting and you think that their centres that they've picked Watkin and, and, and Halaholo are well placed to give you that mm-hmm. cutting against the grain kind of um, um, just running straight and winning contacts which then can recycle and get good ball and leave Italy a little more vulnerable if they're slow to fold yeah. that's the kind of decisions you want the, you want to see them making and but, you want to see guys um, like Falatau getting his hands in the in the tram lines with the wide, wide and 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 maybe yeah, with, yeah. with Alan Wynne Jones back in the team maybe you might see Adam Beard reverse a little bit further out, where he yeah. was a little more out wide you've got yeah. Seb Davis in at six who can also kind of do that pivot yeah. position but you want to see them stretch the field but have the capacity to sit the Italians down and truck it up effectively when they need to while maintaining good tempo and rhythm they, yeah. they, like, it, I've, yet, I've yet to see what else effectively run the ball from the midfield it'll take a decent set piece to do it they, but um, also they, it'll take proactivity to do it they haven't looked to do it tactically they no, haven't but really it's, been looking yeah, to do it they, they um, look like they've picked a team that's designed to do it so, so yeah exciting times for the home fans on the final day to try and rack up a score and do a bit of leapfrogging on the table to try and uh, salvage something from the season as well um, yeah defensively that's one area they should feel confident all the, albeit with the changes their defensive system has looked very good against top level offences coming to town and they've managed to create these kind of scrappy contests that are a little low scoring yeah. predominantly bar week one they, they've been very um, good at, at not giving up the catastrophic play like even if they concede a line break their scramble has been pretty good yeah. they've been very good at oh, getting even down shape. to like that Liam um, Williams sin binning that uh, ended up only being the three points that it could have been the seven and it's yeah. just like not everyone gets that right sometimes you see someone put a big paw out and you're like you're an idiot what are you doing yeah, like no. Luke Cowan Dickey on week one where you're like <laughs> what are you doing front rower yeah, yeah. but Liam Williams and Wales just have a way about them where it's like yes that's a thoroughly illegal thoroughly cynical somewhat scummy play god I'm screaming at the TV but I can also see that it's like it's quite a clever play because that was a try and they ended up picking three and then the the ten minutes elapsed and it's like well now it's vindicated isn't it it's a smart play god damn it why is it a smart play and and their defence has been excellent to that slowing the ball when they need to finding turnovers when they need to staying connected they've had the two 13s playing as 13s on either end of the field which has worked really well and again that's probably where they're going to look to soak up soak up the Italians force force them inside make them flounder to create turnovers was great set pieces yeah, then. and you have you know, like their line it looked so much better last week and now it's another week and you have Alan and Jones that launching off that set piece should be yeah, good and, in and attacking Italy um, there I mean Italy Italy uh, against Scotland they had a uh, excellent set piece that really did uh, that really did give them a, a great base to start from Wales will be looking to get after them in that area yeah. their scrum has been deceptively good all year it didn't struggle against France no, particularly yeah, they, yeah. they gave Ireland had a right cut at Ireland they, they didn't did. struggle they didn't struggle against England and yeah, Garrett Jones. Thomas and Win Jones both of them very good scrummagers it'll be Thomas to start here but if they can get after Ridley in that area and steal some Italian ball that will that will take what little offensive progress Italy have made completely and, and away perhaps from them. a bit of confidence yeah, and yeah, a bit yeah, of yeah. energy if they can couple that with a few well taken scores then the fact that it's uh, you know week 5 or whatever like round 5 and, and just yeah. after their, their very emotional uh, performance that's normally mm. where you do see Italy wilt and, yeah. and Wales just want to create the position mm. to allow that to happen marry that with the likes of Hardy and Tompkins to bring in and, and you, you, you think that it's a good position for Wales if they I can do. if they can just stick to their processes play the same defence play the same set piece game that they've been playing and add a little something on offense they'll they'll be happy that's, with their, with that's their return exactly right yeah and um, um, from Italy's point of view it like as, as we were highlighting their best showing of the year came last weekend so it's like three tries a 
two on debut for an exciting youngster a lot more on the offense a lot more even on the defense just lots of pictures that they can now work from of like this is what we want to do this is what we want to have happen and a few instances of of scotland breaking away going this is absolutely still what we don't want to have yeah, happen yeah. so from a coach, coach's point of view there's a lot of good messages you can get out there it's going to be just tough to like there's no gap week you want to rise to the emotional pitch of it you're going away you're not in Rome you're in Cardiff now and it's uh, it's going to be a, a large part of the battle for Italy is going to be arriving to the pitch of the battle here I, I don't um, disagree I do think that they've reason to be they've more reason to be confident than they've had in quite a while true they've they put they've put some consistent performances together in certain areas of the on, game on the defensive um, end on, to be honest on the yeah, defensive yeah. end is exactly right and listen Wales' attack hasn't been flowing that yeah. well this year they have been leaning on a kicking game and they, they have picked a nine team points last week yeah, yeah and they have picked a team that's going to run the ball Italy need to be there to teach them nay it's not that simple you can't just you can't just all of a sudden start playing offense because it's Italy we're actually not going to let you do that and if you are sloppy if you're ineffective if you're not picking hard lines and cutting through us we're going to eat you alive or if you we're going to beat you one-on-one you're not going to get you're not going to get away from us and then we're going to get our jacklers in and turn over the ball which is going to generate uh, uh, set pieces for us up the field yeah. and, that, and that is where we've been able to launch on offence for the first time all year sure. last week so I think I think the game plan is, is pretty right there for Italy it's it's go after this Welsh offence try and generate some turnovers and maybe catch them playing with a bit of hubris if they're going to be running the ball that's, from everywhere that's exactly it you um, want to stifle that early on by continuing like Lamara leads from the front with that but uh, yeah the, the dogged jackling the making a scrap of every breakdown and therefore slowing the ball staying and, yeah. connected on the defence putting in some big shots when they're there to be the, that when, when someone's there to be hit and a bit upright drop the shoulder put it in which they've been doing very proactively and very well and then suddenly yeah suddenly the doubts if you do unstick a few offloads or make force a few scrums from a good shot and then then there's a murmur around Cardiff as opposed to kind of the, the chorus of song that can reverberate around and that's that's what you want to create as an atmosphere to play in if you're an Italian here and um, it is it is easier said or easier said than done because uh, it is going to be tough they know they're going to be up against it um, and yeah the, the number one thing that Crowley's managed to succeed in changing is just that attitude so you'd want to see particularly on defence you'd want to see that attitude even through the week five because that would be market improvement if we can see them rise to the pitch after like a long campaign mm. for a team like this where you are still getting a little beat up and beaten anyway by all these teams you'd still want to see them be there to the pitch of the game in, yeah. in, in round five which has not always been the case no you want um, to see them make their tackles be, be effective defensively as we've said but then you also want to see them uh, be effective offensively and the key to this more than anything last week was was a really solid set yeah. piece foundations they were, they were again six yeah. from six on their own scrums they were 11 from 12 on their mm. own lineouts and actually managed to turn over three of Scotland yeah. so they, won, they were actually they they were like in, the, in, the, in the first um, half particularly in the first quarter as well they were the discipline side they were edging the penalty count because Scotland were being a bit uh, impatient deal yeah. disciplined and getting ending on the wrong side of the ref's whistle where Italy were doing none of that they weren't rushing up to be quick to be offside they weren't competing at breakdowns that were dead um, so yeah no being patient and, and calm as well as proactive at that set piece and at that breakdown is yeah. step one exactly um, and you look at the try last week um, that they found on the on, when they found space in the edge I'm not sure if it was Padovani who got the dot down but the one off the scrum where Braley broke, uh, broke blind yeah. found Bruno and then yes, it was a loop of Padovani back to Braley and yeah, to Bruno and, and then back and inside. Yeah, lovely re- Really, really well worked. Clever little deceptive loop. You did the late Braley getting the second touch, to, uh, touch caught the Scottish defence unawares. Little plays yeah. like those are going to be very important and a solid set piece foundation does give it to them. It's going to be very difficult for an Italian team with a, with an offence that hasn't been that functional all season to break down a, t- a defence as good as Wales's over multiple phases. Yeah. But on a first a well phase, second phase, phase yeah, one. Yeah. first and second phase, that's where your chances are. And you know, I, I'm, I, we don't have the team just yet from, from an Italian point of view, but I, I imagine young lad Capuozzo will, will at very least be on the bench, yeah. if not starting. But also guys um, like Ioanni. Monti Ioanni has yeah. to go through him. Like even that try that Capuozzo scored at the end, like the start of it was much like what James Lowe's offer in Ireland is just short ball from the for the eleven and the go forward he gives them is, is yeah. stellar and then then you can work from there exactly um, so getting Yoani involved offset piece either deceptively or on a truck up option or on 
oh, hopefully at least once on the edge in space. True. Um, yeah, yeah. That's kind of that's kind of the, the the dream for Italy. They do have finishers out there who can find tries if they can work them into space, and that 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 is the dynamic for their offense. And I mean, once phases one and two fizzle out, you are yeah. going to be looking at a kick most of the time. True. That's fine. Playing playing uh, uh, territory is fine. Trusting their defense is fine. Keeping the game down there. That's that's all good. But they will need if they're going to be competitive in this game to to have some have some joy off set pieces yes. in the offense very true very um, true um, and yeah like it's it's a shame to not have guys like Riccioni at all and, and guys who yeah, have I was been thinking such the a rock the scrum um, is so good like Riccioni from Saracens has been awesome all season and they lost him pre-tournament but from a foundational point of view you know the, the defence looking good like he could be a weapon at scrum if yeah. he's as good as he looks uh, at test level obviously that he still has a point to prove but they actually they do look to have the foundations of a decent side that hopefully can rise to to be more competitive in the years to come. It's more promising and they look better coached than yes. they have in many yeah, years. It's one thing you would um, say is that it, it looks like this tenure already is uh, has a bit more to it than some of the previous coaching tenures we've seen, where it's like one, it is has been one step forward, two steps back. Yeah, although I, th- I thought O'Shea did a good job. With I did too. He just yeah. he just got broken by the job. Like they all seem to ultimately. Yeah, I know. Yeah, um, so I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm rooting for a lot of all of these Italian coaches when they come in to go well. But it is just a tough, uh, a tough task, which is their charge, where you're facing these these juggernauts uh, like kind of Wales and Cardiff. Like it's it's a nightmare when you're an Ireland fl- fan with uh, with aspirations in the tournament. Like much less if you're an Italian coach. Yes, so, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's going to be a tough task for Italy. But here's hoping they are competitive and game for it. And here's hoping they can manage to grab a try out in Cardiff as well. That's one of the aspirations I do have for that for this side is to get a little better on the offense. And I think with time it could come. They have better ingredients, better tools, better players to, at their disposal disposal now than they had before. And and the progress of Benetton that has been well charted. I think there is there are shoot green shoots in uh, in Italy for sure. So hopefully they can put it together on this last weekend and, and do something at least out in Cardiff. Absolutely. But, uh, that being said. I don't see it going that way necessarily. I see, I see maybe a bit more competitiveness and a bit more robustness, but I think ultimately Wales will manage to put a bit of gloss on their mm-hmm. campaign by running in some scores um, against yeah, Italy. I, I'm not thinking. I'm not thinking sixty points though. No, I haven't seen yeah, that yeah. from Italy. I'm not thinking. I haven't seen I, it from Wales really. No, either. indeed. And um, in years gone by, that would have been the kind of result that you would have seen in Cardiff 40, from the last weekend. Maybe forty. I mean, yeah, possibly even less, but I do. Th- I do it's, see. It's just I, getting into springtime. Yeah, it might I, be a bit drier. I certainly see Wales winning the game. I certainly see them finding some tries and, and putting things together towards the tail end. And guys like Tompkins to come in will, will be a difference maker. Yeah, that and bench the, impact. They're prob- yeah. They will get their bonus point. Um, but it'll probably be played at, at a kind of a flat intensity, just given the the dead rubber nature of the game. So sure. I'm not. I'm not totally sold on, on, on the idea that it's going to be an absolute hammering. I think, you know, it could be a, a five tries to two situation, which is obviously a decent game, and that's kind of that's kind of how I see it playing out. Okay, yeah, five tries to two. I'll say six to one, um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, give or take. You know, yeah. hope, hopefully it'll go and, go and grab a Capuzzo getting a hat-trick this time. Let's, yeah, I mean, let's they, see they that. Joanne sc- getting on the board, which scored, he deserves. They scored three um, last week against Scotland and had one picked off right as they were on the line. They you did. Know? So, I think i got to not do that pump fake. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen, I've seen McGrath, Luke McGrath do it against Toulouse for Leinster as well where you, you can't pump fake and then throw it it's going to be picked up yeah. um, against these top level hungry defences but yeah good luck Twiddly who you got for this one let us know in the comments down below are you you bleeding red or are you hoping for le- the Blues to, to pull one, <laughs> pull a fast one out in Cardiff let us all know in that comment down below but uh, with that yeah we're going to move on to the next game absolutely but yes, the show really begins on Saturday afternoon. After that little curtain raiser, which will be a good game, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. This is the, is where the real gravy begins. Silverware on the line in Dublin. Yes. Saturday, kickoff 4.45 GMT. Uh, Ireland against Scotland. Ireland looking for the triple crown. Scotland obviously looking for, to, to, for to the winning record. For the winning, exactly yeah, yeah. right. And, and a crucial scalp over the Irish that they've yet to manage in a wee while as well. So no there's question. definitely there's some stakes in this one for sure. Like Ireland have a chance to take the lead uh, on the table and force France to respond in the later game as well as with like claim that triple crown. So definitely intri- intriguing pedigree for this contest as well as the penultimate, penultimate game, I should say, of this year's Six Nations. Yeah. Um, referee in the game is Wayne Barnes, Monsieur Barnes. Um, yeah, yeah, current re- best in the business. I would argue so, yeah. Assistant referees Carl Dixon and Christoph Ridley with Stuart Terhige in as the TMO as well. Um, so yeah, in the Viva Stadium in Dublin, that's where we're going to see this 
this uh, this curtain raiser to the main event later yeah. on. Uh, yeah. Scotland travelling across the Irish Sea. They have not won in Dublin in 12 years now. That is a long, long it drought. Is, it in, is. Uh, it cu- cu- the curiosity of these parallels, though. 12 years ago was the last time France won the Grand Slam. And yeah. on that last day, Ireland had an opportunity to take the lead in the Six Nations and pressure France. And, and they blew instead, it. they didn't even win the Triple Crown. They had Scotland in Dublin for the Triple Crown in the same year that France last won a Grand Slam. And they lost, if you'll mm. recall. It was at that game. It was not fun. Yeah. And they scored a late try. And Dan Parks put a kick to clutch touchline That's conversion. Right. Yeah. And uh, down went the hopes of a Triple Crown. And as such, Ireland haven't claimed a Triple Crown at home since uh, since uh, as, as early as... Um, uh, uh, 2004 Yeah, uh, that was the last time they claimed one on home soil they've had a few in the time since but their only one in the last decade was when they won the Grand Slam and really uh, there was a brief era under Eddie O'Sullivan when France and Ireland were the two best teams in the comp and Ireland won I think three or three tram- uh, triple crowns in, in four years yes. and actually four and five if you count the Grand Slam then in 09 they won a lot of triple crowns but um, though, though those days were long gone and have been for a while like the, 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 the Triple Crown is nearly as harder to win than the Six Nations yeah, yeah, the Six yeah. Nations trophy gets awarded every year the Triple Crown does not it's true and, uh, it's Wales, true. Scotland and England have all been class in recent years along with Ireland and hence they're tough to win I mean yeah. a, a victory here for Ireland would be a great achievement for it's this true. side that has played so well in yeah, this competition and for the fresh yeah. holders of the Rayburn Shield as of last week as well Ireland have regathered that uh, that perpetual trophy that's too. right um, um, <laughs> it has been bouncing around the old Rayburn <laughs> Shield we, we actually forgot <laughs> to mention it but it's 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 actually it's, it's broken its own record it has um, eight holders in a row have have, have lost it uh, it's, go, gone, yeah. it's gone from uh, I believe Australia lost to Scotland then Scotland lost to South Africa, who then lost to England, who then lost to Scotland, who then lost to Wales, who then lost to England, who then lost to Ireland, who then now plays Scotland. Scotland. Yeah, I don't who know. now yeah, plays yeah, Scotland yeah. Ireland. <laughs> Are they in a position the to end? Rayburn <laughs> Shield. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, it's breaking all the records of its 150 year history as the that the Rayburn Shield being the lineal uh, title of the world yes, that was had by the Springboks yeah. up until they, they lost it to Australia last year That's and then right. briefly got it back and then lost it again yeah. so it is, it's always all, interesting all to follow that fury about it going like oh no I'm the lineal champ lineal champ's more important anyway <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> maybe um, <laughs> but uh, yeah don't don't underestimate that uh, that final day juju of the Scots though they, they haven't actually lost in round 5 in, since 2016 which yeah. is actually very good pedigree and they just had a 33-33 draw 38, depri- 38 or sorry 38-38 38, 38, 38, yeah. uh, draw that deprived them of the perfect record in the last five and yeah obviously last year a massive clutch end of game scenario game winning uh, winning out in Paris like that's yeah. Yeah, they've they been bookending their seasons with good results. Usually recently. been able um, to put it together in round five. Usually yeah. frustratingly out of contention. Yeah, uh, but they have been it's able easy, to put it easier together. for the past yeah. to stick when you've nothing to play for, for sure. Yeah. But uh, but definitely not to be underestimated from an Irish point of view. Um, they'll definitely be gutted to have stalled once more are the Scots. But uh, adding that Irish scalp to their list, uh, their trophy cabinet beforehand is their, is their, their cabinet the of, of, of big away wins, which they've yeah. been racking up in the last couple of years. And this would certainly be as good as oh, any of them. It's more. Yeah, it's yeah. arguably more important than uh, conquering France for them because like they need to uh, they need to play with Ireland yeah, and, well, indeed, and South Africa they're a side that loves matchups I mean they always play well against England they always play well enough against France obviously they didn't this year but they always play badly against Ireland they and they always play badly against South Africa and those are the teams they have to deal with in their group next year yeah. so they have to arrest some of that they uh, have to at least put in a competitive big, performance yeah. but a failing that a win is what they're looking for for sure um, yeah we're going to look into the preview now uh, from both sides point of views and their winning conditions for this one and we're going to start with Ireland, the hosts, uh, that's ourselves. And it's uh, it's an exciting new Ireland team as we've been building. The offense has been, you know, the talk of the town, getting the Kiwis interested in how, how Ireland are attacking and running the pill, which is not quite unprecedented. But to be honest, it's actually been old Ireland and Joe Schmidt's Ireland that wrote the book on how to beat Scotland. To be honest, yeah. if you wanted a, a subtitle of, of Joe Schmidt's master plan for how to play <laughs> rugby, it was the subheading is just how to beat yeah, and bully yeah. the Scots. Yeah. Uh, cause he it thought is he that. was writing a plan to win the World Cup, no. but in fact he was writing a plan to beat Scotland. Yeah. <laughs> and and he consistently has done that. And it, yeah. it remains to be seen whether we see this new, exciting new Irish team revert to that type given that it's been so successful or we see a slightly different picture in this one to how this game goes yeah well I mean Ireland have been pretty steadfastly doing their own thing and they talked about it in the build up to the Twickenham game was like 
we're gonna we're gonna stick to ourselves we're focusing mm. on ourselves and it's just about delivering in that pressure cooker environment of Twickenham and not finding themselves reverting to, to something else be yourselves and play your own game and yeah. they, they fairly steadfastly stuck to that um, now the, the issue was turnovers and they turned over the ball 17 times yeah, in that game 17 times um, last week which, which is, is massive in for Scotland who are tend to be good off turnover yeah, balls it, that's, um, so that's an extraordinary stat so yeah. I think logic tells you that that even though their offensive game isn't tailored to one defence versus another and they believe that if they play their game they'll they'll open up any defence that maybe there's a case to be made for just tightening it up a little bit like yeah, subtracting going, 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 going off whiskey totally. and sexton mostly yeah. get your forward runners and your, yeah. your latchers a little tighter and yeah because the, the, the latch game has just done for like Scotland love to soak and jackal and, and try and generate a turnover and just the Irish tendency to go round the corner round the corner off nine with two pillar or two latchers there ready to blast through the contact and the rook is uh, is just has been enough for Scotland to soak metres after metres and ultimately look a little impotent in terms of flailing around trying to deal with that and then looking very raggedy by the end in terms of the defensive exhaustion it puts on them when they're still trying to get in for rooks that are dead and then there's space over and then they're chasing the game and the passes are not going to deck that's been the picture in this matchup so far recently and yeah I'm just curious to see what Ireland we see show up in that regard because they they have a playbook that's a little out of date for them this year and what they're trying to accomplish but it is like pretty much a, a way to be to, to do for this Scotland team so this defense yeah. yeah just winning the power game I think I think regardless of whether or not they revert fully to that same shape I think they will we'll definitely they'll, defi- they'll yeah. definitely keep some some similar shape and Sexton will want to be running off his forward pods and picking his best options yeah but I think they're going to have to put an emphasis on the quality of carry first of all just winning those contacts carrying well being uh, good with your footwork uh, to, to beat your to beat your opposite man and, and, and generate go for it and then on, on the, the offensive breakdown and just generally ball protection yeah. protecting the ball is so important in, in, in terms of getting getting any kind of rhythm and especially for an Ireland team that their attack is great but it, it uses phases Does. to work like it, it, it it's about quick rook ball but it is about rooks there are still plenty of rooks involved in what Ireland are trying to do True. and so they have to protect the ball better than they have been which it's means true. tightening things up yeah, not, throw, not throwing all throw these offloads, offloads like if you're winning were, contacts um, they did learn that lesson by the end of the England game yeah, and those, yeah. those last tries came from not forcing the pass the same way but in this Scotland matchup and they've had evidence for it before there's no need for that fancy offloading the tight really because the, the guy who's next to you who you're trying to stick with the pass is there to clear the rook anyway so just go yeah. to deck and go again and, and force Scotland to backpedal and, and reset on the defence and um, that's what I'd expect to kick to see and then the kicking game as well a varied kicking game is what you want to see from both Gibson Park from Sexton from Lowe um, good exits but you want to kind of get that, that Scottish back three that can be so dangerous going forward get them on the turn that's find it, like, grass behind them Wales um, are an excellent uh, kick, 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 kicking game kind of team and Scotland are an excellent kicking game kind of team in a different way Ireland played that game out of it against Wales by moving the ball really yeah. well in Dublin in the Aviva Stadium where they're so comfortable they ran the ball from everywhere and then all of a sudden it didn't matter how good Liam Williams was in the air yeah. it didn't matter how good bigger Bigger's bombs were because they didn't have the ball and they weren't able to stop Ireland Scotland have a great defence too but even like the Italians showed that they can be got out of first phase and sure. this Irish offence hasn't been stopped I mean there are yeah. plenty of great defences France came closest France did stop them for a yeah, half they did. and then Ireland came back to life in the second half and answered with some great offence as well England stopped them in part by shutting them down at set piece but whenever Ireland were able to generate momentum and hold on to the ball they opened them up and still found four tries in that game True. they need to be confident in themselves they need to like their offence is their greatest strength it's arguably the best offence in the competition perhaps even including France yeah and so they need to trust it. They need to trust it to go after this Scottish defence, to overload them, to win those collisions. And then if they're just getting quick ball and dominant collisions, they will unpick this Scottish uh, the Scottish defence. I don't yeah, doubt it. Think. And then on the defensive end as well, Scotland present a different challenge to uh, to what England were, were throwing at them last week, for sure. Um, they'll need to be alert to that. Like First phase is crucial because yeah. off scrum and line out, the Scotland team know how to run an offence and run a strike play. So big test for the centres. I think this week it's Bundy and Ringrose with Henshaw to come in off the bench as well. So 
massive task for all of those guys who will see minutes to try and read the right option read what's go where the ball's going and shut it down behind the gain line easier said than done obviously they're not facing Finn Russell this week which is an interesting difference for them in terms of what the picture is but uh, but nonetheless it, it, it's still it's, Scotland it's, it's different but it's not that different no it's, it's still, still, it's still, still run be, the same similar yeah, game it, when Kinghorn's in there exactly it'll um, still be Gregor Townsend's offence which yeah. is all about speed offset piece which can catch Ireland it can I mean they're going yeah. to try and find the edge they're going to try and isolate ring rows off mm. scrums They after, off scrums they run great patterns but you Usually it's like screen, screen, then you found your edge and you've yeah. got Hog or someone like that sweeping sweeping on behind and if, if Ring Rose folds too far over then they'll hit the short runner. Mm-hmm. They're really good at that. And then off line out, I expect them to try and exploit the same things that France exploit where Ireland can get can overfold on the open side and then can be caught coming back against the sure. grain. Yeah. Townsend's wise to all that stuff. Yes. And I think that's the, got a the, good mind for it. Uh, drawing up plays for certain teams and he uh, draws up lovely first and second phase moves off set piece. So Correct, Ireland yeah. defensively big job for the centres, big job for the back row and the, and the pack as well to make make their source a little scruffy as well if they can get a nudge on at scrum time or if they can get a hand in at line out legally because Ireland again have been a little bit you know, again, too quick to toss a man clean across and give away a cheap penalty as well, which yeah. is not, not something they want the to see. Penalty count was bad last it week. Was Fifteen bad against last week. them. It was. Yeah. They need to tidy many. all of yeah. that up in this area, and then uh, yeah, be able to trying to exert themselves on the Scots. Guys like Josh van der Fleer getting up in the face out of the line to make the inside options just not options and force Scotland to force passes. That's mm-hmm. where Ireland have found some good success recently. Is when Scotland are trying to access that edge, but they're doing it like kind of panicked and reactively yeah, like, like um, what happened to them against the Springboks yeah. last autumn yeah. that that for sure and I'd be confident that Ireland can be physical enough to, to get after the Scots uh, in, in the multi-phase defence yeah. it's the first and second phase defence that, that really it's, and it's, it's relying make or break. Yeah, largely yeah. On, on Gary Ringrose as a leader of that defence with Bundy yeah. to, to, to 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 shut down what is a dangerous Scottish attack truly um, yeah yeah, yeah. That's, it's, it's going to hinge a lot on whether they can they can succeed in that area or not um, then as well as getting on top of them physically across the park uh, the aerial challenge will be a challenge like we're in Dublin Ireland like it will kick some balls despite mm-hmm. trusting the offence Scotland love a 50-22 attempt we know that big Stuart Hogg spirals and whatnot. big day for Keenan who's coming off the back of one of if not his best showing in green he needs to be alert his position yeah. needs to be it's, sharp it's, it's, his probably yeah. biggest weakness attributally is, is just that he's not got that like elite speed he's no. not got that he's ability not, he's not got that ability to cover the field like Bowden Barrett no indeed um, yeah so his positioning and his awareness needs yeah. to be a little bit heightened and the yeah. fact that we saw an interview with him a while ago and he was citing as an influence Ben Smith from New Zealand as a yeah, guy yeah. he's modelling and it's like that's that's good Hugo <laughs> yeah, yeah. keep thinking like Ben Smith and you'll be in good shape because yeah. that guy was the genius on the field who's like again quick and fast and strong but not the quickest or the fastest or the strongest but yeah. he was the best at making just the right read the right decision every time yeah. and that's where like Hugo does look like a man who's modelling his game like on, on that unspectacular little unflash sometimes but pretty correct most of the time and that's what you want to see again controlled and assured from fullback is a key way to remove one of those Scottish ins because those big kicks are a big in for this Scotland team with the new 50-22 rule as well if you can diffuse some of that uh, with assuredness from the back that'll just discourage the Scots and encourage and embolden your own pack as well yeah no question um, they'll be looking to right the wrong of that uh, of, of, of what happened them last week they've been talking about their scrum saying they didn't have a, a bad scrum they haven't become a bad scrum overnight they have traditionally in this curious sort of uh, trifecta matchup between themselves Scotland and England they've had the Indian sign over Scotland England have had the Indian sign over them and Scotland have had the Indian sign over, over England yeah. um, but they, one of those yeah, math like, doesn't add up the rugby maths doesn't end up just no. because we beat these guys doesn't mean we beat this lot yeah, C- yeah. correct well look at the Raver and Shield yeah, yeah, indeed. Yeah, yeah. but um, I, I mean uh, Ireland are, 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 are it's a good game for them to in, in terms of a get right game for this yeah. for this front yeah. row like they've got Keane Healy back in there they've got Ty for along back in there with Dan Sheehan they have to get that right they've they got do. Big Ian Henderson in from the start with Tyburn like it's a it's a big area Xander Fagerson has been struggling this year to be honest he's yeah, gone, he's gone, he's gone down he should be getting after him. Yeah. on the other side you know Schumann is a big challenge and Furlong will want to be able to try yeah. and deal with the pressure exactly. that's coming on he, he's a great he's a great player Schumann he's not as good as Genj he's, yeah. he's, he's not, as, not quite as aggressive yeah, 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 yeah. as so, Genj so, so it'll be a different challenge exactly they, they, need, they need to rally they need to rebound at the scrum and if they can get after the Scots in those areas and just 
control the ball, control the yeah, contact control the area. Pillar, and, and, um, and not just the scrum, the line out as well. Like a few times they were scuppered by Atoji and just by their own looseness mm-hmm. at their own line out last week as well. They'll want to tidy up all those areas and like because they yeah. can launch off Malsha. Sure, their last, their bonus point score came from one of the few set pieces they got right last week, and they saw the dividends from them. They know how to strike and they know how to soak Scottish yeah. forwards in and then capitalize. And, and, and they know how to beat this Scottish tight five up. I know Johnny mm-hmm. Gray is back for them and. And, and Grant Gilchrist has had a really dodgy tournament of it you know in Darge and, and, and Watson and Fagerson you have from a defensive point of view guys who want to jackal yeah. and as you pointed out the soak the soak, uh, the, the latching and the soak tackling of the Scotch ca- Scots can be punished for Ireland so the pack need to be bullish about getting after the Scots right in the wrong that was last week yeah. they've had a couple of, of, of tough days out this year where last year they, they won every forward battle they had yeah. this is a big game for them to get back on the horse in their home stadium in Dublin dominate the forward battle and they will win the game yeah and that's that's the plan from an Irish point of view win the game try and do it with some style put yourselves in the lead and then sit back and hope that that either France choke or England do the favour or a combination of both but that's the job from an Ireland point of view is just get that win on the board and uh, get yourself onto the top of the log however briefly it may be absolutely um, but from a Scotland point of view yeah we're, we're another rough campaign obviously two from two uh, having just beaten the Italians last week although not wholly convincingly if we're being brutally honest as well it's just one of those those seasons that's just drifted by and with the promise of last season and their wins over England and France in Paris and in, uh, and in London it's uh, it's disappointing the way they followed up but 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 it's a chance to right some of those wrongs it's a chance to get a serious scalp as we were saying in advance of those World mm. Cup pools generate a bit of momentum into the off season but also a bit of confidence to glean and to take into that very very difficult pool group that they're going to be facing in 2023 so there's, there are still stakes it's not a dead rubber for Scotland although it is just another season goes by and we're in week five in the Six Nations and they aren't playing for anything which is, no. is a frustration uh, indeed as the, yeah. as the years tick on for, for Townsend's team yeah. um, another year without silverware uh, beckons but um, they, as, you point, as we pointed out at the start they have a great record in round 5 in this competition yeah on the pitch, this is just such a this is such a phenomenally tough matchup for them. It's just it's not one they've dealt with well. Um, to we right, haven't really seen them evidence of them beating that that physical power based no. short game yet. It's, it's, and, it's, and the most recent evidence was the South Africa game that they played, and it was it was a sad sight yeah, by but, the end. As you pointed yeah. out, Schumann is the is the guy who's come in and and given a freshen a freshening to this uh, to this Scottish tight five and added stuff. They've got Johnny Gray back in the side this week. It's just got to be a huge performance for him. Yeah. He has not played well against. Ireland ever and yeah. likewise Grant Gilchrist who has been for some reason trusted to continue despite having a really poor Six Nations I feel, I feel yeah, um, no, and, and, and with many other locks who are putting their yeah, hands yeah. like Swinson Cummins was really back in the squad this for week. Yeah. every week and yeah, you're yeah. like there's good locks out there so it's it, if they get dominated in Dublin then it, it'll obviously not um, be a vindicated decision but that's not the plan they, they need um, to rally they need to make things happen they need to stop the Irish with physicality like we've seen Herculean efforts out of the likes of Johnny Gray against England where he's cutting good lines where he's getting out of the line and making big tackles he's smothered the likes of Atoji they have True. done that before yeah. it, like if you can do that to England's tight five you can do it to Ireland's but we just haven't seen it so far True. and it, yeah. they, they, need, they need they need to find it in a big way that tight five yeah. um, that said like that obviously defensively we'll get into that that's a tough matchup against this excellent offence but they never look better, the Scots, under Gregor Townsend than when they're playing free-flowing, attacking footy. And it's probably part of the reason why round five goes so well for them. They've been together a while. They start to gel. Yeah. The pressure's off usually by round five for them. Yeah, and then all of a sudden they can just focus on their offence. And despite last week being a dodgy week against Italy... Yeah, it, uh, wasn't, it wasn't for Ali Price, who was sticking lovely passes. It wasn't, um, wasn't for the offence in general. Yeah, they scored yeah. five tries. They got one off a kick return. They got an interception, which they Converted ended up taking expertly. brilliantly yeah, because yeah. they're so good in the open field they had a scrum strike play they had a multi-phase set that resulted in a great Russell Graham connection yes, on an inside right. ball and they had a sort of a chaotic phase where Ali Price was able to cut through the line yes, off, off a broken field ball yeah. and they all they, they, they gelled really well with each other they read the game off each other once the line was broken the try was inevitable in exactly the way that it wasn't in that clutch game against France yeah. but nevertheless it was excellent against Italy last week with Price running the show and yeah. that, that needs to return for them again obviously it's just a huge job 
job for Blair Kinghorn to try and produce that because yeah. you think of these round fives like my thought is always goes back to Finn Russell against yeah, England yeah. from 31 nil down yeah. to just finding Making those it plays happen. Yeah, but he is on the bench and he yeah, will yeah. come in for that last quarter anyway to try and make something happen and the idea is to be in, Maybe in, in, touch, in touching yeah. distance yeah, with yeah. It when that happens and part of that will be punishing Irish area, uh, errors on exit if, if Ireland are getting rambunctious with their offence and playing out then maybe punishing them with uh, excuse us there because the camera goes bye um, bye there we'll go, go visual but uh, but yeah uh, punishing them with a few kind of po- quick poaches cheap threes that would be an ideal in for them away from home to try and just get a foothold in the game um, but then from there yeah trusting their strike moves off set piece to try and open this Ireland team up try and exploit some of the slight speed deficits, sometimes the, the physicality deficit, if you can isolate ring rows and overload them out there. Exactly. I mean, you, know, you, you run those kind of multiple screens and just sit down the inside defence and then leave Gary Ringrose in a situation where he has to shut down Hogg running an arc out on his outside. Ringrose might struggle to make that tackle and then all of a sudden Scotland, when they get to the edge, have been excellent at finding tries. And that, for sure, is their best matchup. Ireland's defence has been good this year. I'm often pretty harsh on it on the podcast because <laughs> it looks when it goes wrong it looks very bad it looks slow when um, but that is Scotland's uh, best yeah. in in this game their best matchup is their offence versus Ireland's defence can they make that work and, yeah. and get some scores That's it's got to be that and they've got to get some scores and they've got to stick the pass, stick the pass. Yeah. Yeah. too often we've seen that one obviously the French one getting all the highlights but we've seen in this particular game Ireland v Scotland it be a uh, very close contest that Scotland have a, have a chance on 50 or 60 minutes to cut through and take the lead with a beautiful coast to coast 7 pointer and it's only the last pass that just inexplicably gets dropped out of nowhere yeah. and they can't afford repeats of that those passes need to stick they're in Dublin haven't won here for 12 years it's just it's got to go it's got to go <laughs> yeah, so yeah. it remains to be seen whether it can do the biggest question is still the, the stopping of the Irish offence and the, their defence has matched up so poorly against the more rudimentary offence that many teams have found very easy to defuse Scotland haven't been able to defuse that yet and haven't shown evidence of it plus you have a lot more layers coming at you now as well so big task for your Harrises in the back three to try and or in the, the midfield to shut all that down but also just the, the pack in tight five but the pack in general have to have to have to step up and make positive context one, one, yeah, co- if, one if, contact if Shulman, in every three has to be a positive Scottish yes. one if you're letting Ireland roll over you it's just you saw in the Wales game in the opening day that it's just it's untenable to defend them if you're not going to drive them back no indeed and that um, was it that Ireland and their, their multiple options are incredible like yeah. Ireland's offence is, is, is wizardry at its best like the, the, there's so many different options you've got Sexton running the show just furlong slotting in a 10 like you've yeah. got to respect his hustle and his yeah. power and you've got to respect the ability to get the pass away I've, I've, I've yet to see it stopped but I think I think the chink in its armour was laid out by England last week and, and that by is France and Paris yeah, yeah. It, it, well France and Paris was different like yeah. France and Paris was dominating them physically in the contact areas as much as you say one in three contacts has to be a positive one yes but at the same like, like Scotland we know for a fact are not going to come out of the line and start smashing Ireland back on mm. two or three phases in a row like France did and then no. blowing them away at the breakdown no. it's not who they are no. what they might be able to do is attack the pill attack yeah. the pill relentlessly yeah. at every contact at every breakdown get force turnovers like they need to like they need to really force Ireland to, to respect the ball they need our, the Irish players carrying with two hands on the ball looking to protect it because they're so fearful of the Scottish look going at after them on every True. occasion it'll slow down the passing game it'll slow down the offloading game like if I was like doing a crash course for Scotland on what to do to stop Ireland that's where I'd start attack mm. the pill attack the pill attack the pill they've got a back row that's great at it it's true pretty much Darge and, and yeah and they Nish. just need to adjust and, to that because they yeah. love to soak and jackal and it just doesn't match up well yeah. against Ireland ever so yeah shift of focus different tactic we're going to swing an arm in at the pill every time yeah. we go into the contact yeah. and try and dislodge it absolutely um, it's a legitimate NFL play it's a very legitimate rugby play now as well try and get the arm in dislodge the pill and yeah Ireland as you say the stats to show they coughed up 17 last week let's say our, Scotland should be saying like let's try and make it 18 this week that's definitely a recipe for them to manage to f- find a famous gr- victory on away soil on Irish soil that has been so elusive part of it will be generating those turnovers and being proactive in that contact getting area getting after them off them yeah. striking off line outs getting some blindside wingers involved some trickery yeah. getting some points on the board for straight Ireland on the other end and then it's a tight getting game getting favourable matchups like, and managing to stick past yeah, exactly just yeah, making yeah. Ireland uncomfortable like they did with France last year making Ireland uncomfortable with the fact that they aren't dominating that it is a ding dong battle yeah. and then clutchily if that's a yes, word indeed. finding the winning with score with clutch yes <laughs> yeah, that, that finding a winning score would be a nice one but playing with a bit of clutch and a bit of heart also important uh, yeah Scott, the Scottish temperament minding that away from 
home, not allowing the moments that Ireland are on top to, to weigh on them too heavily as well, no, minding yes. their own temperament as much as trying to proactively stymie Ireland's. You can't expect for them to wilt, and nor can you respond to their purple patch by wilting yourselves. And that no. should be the lesson they glean from the France game themselves. But coming away from home to Dublin, they're going to have to be on their blow. And, and even though they, they know, they like, have to accept going in, it's not all going to go their way. Ireland no. are going to have periods of play that are going to go their way. It's how they respond that's, that's yeah, the biggest exactly. test for this team. Yeah, if they can respond to Irish tries with tries of their own, then they're going to game be in on. this game come yeah. the last quarter. Absolutely. And Finn Russell, and Finn come Russell comes in and suddenly, yeah, you know, it could be a bit yeah. of magic. Um, yeah, with that though, what do you think will happen? Um, I, I think I, I, I'll stick to what I said last week. What I said last week was I trust the Irish offence. I've yet to see it stopped. It always finds tries. It always does enough. So far in the last year, they've scored 24 points at least in every, every single team, game every 12, get 12 game streak of scoring at least 24 and very often much more than 24 um, I trust it I think it's been great I think we can we can do enough on the defensive end to stop Scotland keeping up with our offence and even last week even when things didn't go well for us we still managed to find tries with our great offence and we did in Paris as well despite them blowing us away and I think the Scots will get some plays off I think they will frustrate us with some turnovers but I trust us to overcome that and to keep on them and ultimately to, to let them wilt and, and to find the tries necessary to win the game yeah. and hopefully claim a triple crown. That would be nice. And to um, be fair, that's that's where my head's at as well. Yeah, I think yeah. we're probably a little too good for this Scotland team on, on, on in a few areas. Um, Hope just so. a little. I don't Hope think it's a lot. I, no. I think Scotland are bloody good. Um, but I also have faith in, in Ireland's ability at home. I think the Aviva is just a bit of a fortress as well. Triple crown on the line, uh, potential for a Six Nations to win. I think Dublin, uh, Ireland will be keen, even despite a record-breaking bonus point win in, Fra- in in England last week. The fact, the emasculating fact of what happened in the scrum will be good messaging to dial them in and just be focused. And by contrast, I think Scotland might, might just see that you know, Ireland are here to play and might just kind of, not not respond as well as you could you would hope they had with Kinghorn out there instead of Russell it's a little bit of change and a bit discombobulated too I think Ireland should just be able to fancy getting putting the squeeze on get on top of them and, and win the game probably by between 5 and 10 points is where my head's at um, I'm, yeah I'm, I'm inclined inclined to agree I think I think we've said our piece but listen let us know what you guys think in the comments down below um, do you fancy Scotland in this one to pull off the upset as they did in 2010 as they've yeah. done so frequently in recent years yeah. in round 5 a bit of that, that mirror imaging Finn Russell second half magic or do you think Ireland are too good they're going to get this win get the triple crown get themselves some silverware and put themselves in a great position going into next season all your thoughts down below in the comments but with all that said I think we're going to move on true but yes what what the real main show after Ireland have claimed their triple crown (laughs) is going to take place in the Stade de France in Paris um, on Saturday evening, yeah. the crescendo of what has been a wonderful Six Nations, what promises to be a wonderful Super Saturday, as France looked to claim the Grand Slam and put to bed that 12-year uh, drought of, yeah. of, of Six Nations titles. Yeah, it would look um, like one of those mid-aughts tournaments where Ireland get a triple crown and, and look very good, but lose out yeah. to a France Grand Slam. Uh, I, I haven't I, seen those ones in a while. I, I will tongue-in-cheekly <laughs> declare Ireland to be triple crown winners once, not twice. That way you're spoiling <laughs> yeah, things. Yeah, no, I know. <laughs> but um, uh, this, this, this match um, it, it is, is, it is, is for it all, and it's just perfect for France. At home, in the Stade de France, kick, uh, 8 o'clock kick-off, um, GMT nine o'clock local time, mm-hmm. right in the in the cauldron that has been that stadium for the last year. Really, it's just been an incredible atmosphere since the fans have come back. Truly. They couldn't have asked for a better picture. Yeah, um, taking the game is Yako Piper of South Africa with Mike Adamson and Frank Murphy on the sidelines and Marius Yonker in as TMO. Yeah, and um, yeah, I mean, I don't know if France had wanted any other way. England <gasps> coming to town, yeah, Le Crunch, yeah, yeah. you know, Le Crunch <laughs> for Le Grand Slam. That's that's kind of what the what they want to be in. Like that's yeah. They get the old enemy. They want to take them on. They want to take them on on home soil with a raucous kind of festival carnival atmosphere going on in uh, in the Stade de France. That's exactly when they want where they want this. They've managed to get over the last two weeks of you know the potential banana skins of both Murrayfield and Cardiff, which is just yet to get over both of them. Grand Slam still in, in on track. A few wibbles here or there, but they've come through them with flying colours past those tests. So, yeah, momentum is definitely with this French side as they roll in to the final week. Um, England themselves 
they're five and two in the last seven Six Nations meetings between the sides, including a twenty three or twenty three twenty victory last year. But uh, France are the ones, you know, kind of well, fr- with France. The momentum have, France has time. taken a hammer to all those records. It was it's like, true. oh, they've they've lost such and such games against Scotland, but not, not this, this team. team. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, that that's kind of they have been putting to bed all of those trends uh, in in recent weeks. So I wouldn't give that too much credence. Yeah. Um, but this, yeah, it'll possibly be the last time the two sides meet in Paris this side of the World Cup as well. So that'll be definitely on England's mind, true. just leaving a, a positive memory there as opposed to a negative one. Um, but for France, history beckons, and it is all about the here and now. Um, it's a pressurized environment for sure. They're like their fans all are are, are sitting in expectation, waiting yeah. to get to shower them with praise and beckon them home joyfully. But at the same time, they they do expect a win here, and that they is its do. own pressurized well, it's a, environment. Like it's a, a win or um, bust is exactly where it is. Yeah. Not just because like it's the Grand Slam or it's or, like and, and to not have the Grand Slam would sully it, but. Like they'll they will know going into this what they have to do, but they, they could have the title. They Scotland could have the title Ireland if France if, if, if Scotland yeah. turned Ireland over, over, they'll know that it's it's moot. But they'll still want the Grand Slam. But the likely scenario and the one that they're plotting for at this point in the week is that they'll winner, have to winner, win the winner yeah, bust. Yeah. And it's again that question mark of like when is the France team going to win a trophy? They're hoping the answer is this weekend. Yes, um, and, and they they yeah. have been fabulous in this tournament. They they will feel they've deserved it, and they've thrived in that pressure they have, environment in yeah, recent because they're recent weeks. Of that defense, yeah. that yes. defense that bails them out yeah. Um, yeah no it's definitely true for England it's more just a chance to save face on the final weekend yeah, get back to a winning record of some description as well and uh, yeah well, manage like their expect- they, if, expectations if, and kind of ride a bit of momentum into their own summer tour and if it goes badly like they're, they're off tour in Australia if it goes badly like with Wales getting a likely five points and Scotland potentially being game enough to get maybe a losing bonus point in Dublin they could finish fifth again in back to back years which would just put so much pressure on Eddie Jones possibly Possibly too much pressure. I mean, I, I don't think that England rugby, just don't think rugby in general is that knee jerk. I think they would let him, they will let him take the World Cup regardless of what happens. But gee whiz, yeah, they, they a hammer blow to the team. You they, know, it's they don't too... want to go fifth back to back. They don't. And, yeah, yeah heading off for rugby. a tough tour to us as well, where the likes of Tupo are, are waiting and Australia are looking to put to bed what happened to them uh, yeah. a few years back. Like yeah. it, it could just, it could take this England team that's full of potential to dark places. But that said, they they'll take encouragement from how well their tight five and set piece performed in Dublin, and, and we'll look to add that add to that and, and heap the pressure on uh, heap the pressure on France. Yeah, and hope that they're the ones to win because yeah, yeah, they're in a position where it's it's all to play for, but nothing really to to kind of not the same kind of pressure yeah. that that France are going on are no. going under or the scrutiny. So if that they can no, use you that you to can play, play with a chip advantage. on your shoulders. Yeah, well, people are doubting us. People don't think that we're world class. Yeah, but well, we maybe are, I'll so. try this speculative pass, and maybe it'll work. <laughs> um, yeah, no, all of that for me, um, but we. We are going to move on and look at the previews, the meat of them, uh, the winning conditions for both sides. And we're going to start with the home side, the hosts, that is La France, Les Bleus. And uh, yeah, Le Grand Slam is all that's <laughs> on the minds for them. Uh, nothing else really matters, to be, to be, to be fair. It's, it's win, get that Grand Slam, get that rolling. It's one year out from the World Cup. This would be on the macro, just t- things ticking along according to the plan. When you look back on the Autumn Nations Cup and they were talking about blooding players of a certain age demographic and it was all by and large 23 to 25 year olds that they were blooding at that time and the team looked ropey and inexperienced at that because it was mostly youngsters and now those kids are a few years older and they look much more mature and and really have benefited from that blooding early and they're ready to peak in time for this world cup not before right now or right now (laughs) this is it like the, the the plan is to try and capture some silverware before you go into that and that starts here they put themselves in a great position they'll obviously pre-kick off be a big bag of nerves because how could you not be you know they're only human but uh, it's about how they manage themselves with all that and you know eat nerves it <laughs> was it eat nerves results is the old adage <laughs> try and do is do a bit of that and uh, yeah arrive well, to the pitch they, of this battle and they, they set the tone early they have started well every they game so far in this competition stellar. they have and never the, had to come the, back the longest um, they've had to wait for a try nearly has been around eight minutes or nine yeah like, isn't it like yeah that, that that is that has been the key to their success i mean yeah. we don't we don't know what this French team looks like when they're having to chase a game yes, and they don't true. want to know they don't, they don't want to know, know right they no, want to especially stay. in a Grand Slam decider no, and a final day shootout yeah. where it's like every second that ticks on and you're not in the lead that's more no. pressure yeah exactly yeah. they <laughs> want to get after England from the off and one of the ways that they've done it is by negating an early kicking game with excellence off kick return yeah, kick return and try like that's exactly. punishment du- for it yeah, Dupont yeah. Jaminet Villiers these the guys Mac run it back very nicely yeah, yeah, they, yeah. they link up very well and they do if England are trying to play a pressure kicking game getting a little offload away 
yeah, beating a man one on one and then linking up with someone just to just to get even half a line break and set up their own offense does change the picture of the game. And when England are playing a kind of a rudimentary game as it is coming into this one, that's the way that they can yeah. look to just well, just considering like the um, kicks in field that, that Wales presented England with forced them to launch off kick return rather than set piece. And you can see that England were nowhere near as assured as what France have been bringing to that kick return transition game. France yeah. have been just all of their instincts dialed into one to try and sweep across and in a few phases manage to execute and find the space that's what it's got to be about because the kicking game will be important but they can't afford to be suckered into a, a kicking duel between no, and to be this fair, like they, they've team. been the best side in this competition off kick return um, they have they have they've been brilliant yeah. at it and they need they need to bring that to this game because England will kick it though they will. oh it's, well the yeah. offensive game that England brought in the last few weeks is to kind of truck it up especially from the middle third truck it up a few times run out of ideas kick it in the air yeah. and France need to be ready for that and ready to diffuse that but to be honest one would think that a couple of weeks away in in Cardiff and then uh, and Scotland would uh, would prepare you for that kind of onslaught. Yeah, and one of the things, obviously, like it hasn't been perfect from them, especially away from home the last couple of weeks. They didn't play well from the midfield last week. France they had no. one that had that one they kick got, return they got that led to the try. They got suckered into that kind of game. That like yeah. we were seeing Dupont's box kicking game as he was running away from a rook and then haphazardly kicking it up in the air. And they're not really built to do that. They're not very good at it. We were mm. crit- critical of them in the last few years for getting into those kind of territory games and just never really winning them. Like yeah. so, it's such that like yes, their offense looked bloody brilliant. It's a shame they're only generating like three chances per game because yeah. they're never winning the territory exchanges yeah. so kick return transition is much more into their into their identity plays into and plays into the crowd that are going to be dying to see a bit of that magical rugby and so yeah, yeah play and, play your and, own and game at the start of the game as well one of the one of the areas that they they haven't launched that well off is line out actually like the early against Ireland they, they had a great try that came off off a kick into touch but it was because they took the line out quickly yes, and went going yeah, yeah. Like they're more comfortable off kick return I expect Eddie Jones to have his homework done on that I expect England to kick for touch and not kick for infield when they are exiting and then the question becomes can France launch off line out because a few times this season I've watched them have a line out midfield that has been uh, mauled and then box kicked yeah. and that's that's like they, they launch very well off scrums they attack very well off kick return but for some reason the line out hasn't been their friend yeah. and that's definitely something that I'd, that I'd look to see them rectify it's going to be tough because that like that yeah, yeah. Yeah, Toji's on the other side yeah, and Will Rowland did a job on them yeah, yeah. the last time out like that line out is going to have to be and important. to be honest as good as their scrum has been and like the dominant showing they put in against Ireland was was encouraging but uh, just coming off the back of that that yeah. England scrum is no joke when it's coming to town so being able to contain that like they do mm-hmm. like launching off scrums they're going to have to get that set piece right right as well. Big gut jobs for Cyril Bai, Uni Antonio. Uh, yeah, that front row matchup is just box office. It's great, that isn't front it? five matchup yeah. is just box office if, as if well. If they can get on top of England there, though, they will be in a great position. Yeah. And, they, and they have the capacity. If they can they're, even get party there, they'll be in a great position. Because, yeah. like, as we were saying, on transition, like once the line is broken, I have confidence in their offense to find the tries against yeah, this they, England defense. They are more dangerous than England. Yeah. They're, they're more da- there's, there's no doubt about that. So, it's what true. they don't want to have happen is to get suckered into an England game which they kind of have had happen against Wales England are going to want to play pressure kick pressure kicking game they're going to want to play intense collisions they're going to want to play set piece footy France like in the last couple of away games and it was away from home so you do have to bear in mind that they, they played the second half extremely passively yeah. just kicking kicking downfield hoping that the other side would make a mistake and against against Scotland they were lucky that Scotland did play into their hands and tried to run the ball against their defence from deep and they were yeah. able to then generate turnovers and get some fun tries yeah. but England aren't going to do that England are going to kick it back to them they're going to play pressure ball and yeah. if they get sucked into that game then all of a sudden the power tackling and the power the turnovers that these England teams yeah, the, the hustling generated. pedigree of um, guys like I told you getting into your breakdown and making it a mess and yeah. make, getting into your line out and making it a mess and yeah it's, it's, um, it'll tell it'll tell especially if they haven't been able to, to get a couple of tries on the board yeah, or if they're quarter. behind if yeah. they're behind and it's minute 60 in that scenario that's yeah. when it might tell or yeah, even yeah. minute 45 I mean, yeah, they yeah. played passive second halves and that might be something that they're going to have to write if they can't get their, their helter skelter start going which obviously is planned that's yeah, um, for sure. Um, defensive end is what their bread and butter, though. They will, yes. they will love the matchup here of this floundering and somewhat fledgling Eng- and and a little bit kind of shy English offense as well. Certainly on the show evidence of last week, like kind of reticent to pull the trigger because they don't quite know what they're doing. 
they said Edwards' defense should be confident in its ability to mop all of that up, a gobble all of that yeah. up, and be be dominant, force them to kick and and force them to kick poorly on, on force them to kick on their own terms. That's what the difference between proactive defense and proactive kicking versus reactive kicking is. Normally, seven points to France if you're kicking reactively and scuffing it down the middle of the field. That's normally seven points when this France team dial it yeah, in. So it was, that's it was those one are the pictures they want to create. The last weekend, yeah. one scuffed spiral after yeah. from all his great spirals, and if that was enough for France. Um, yeah. So forcing those bad kicks from Marcus and getting pressure on yeah. him. I mean, I'm I'm back in Gail Fiku on the on the outside and the likes of Francois Cross and Greg Aldred on the inside to just make this a very uncomfortable day for Marcus Smith. Yeah. I mean, the English offense hasn't had rhythm. It hasn't had much shape to it. Marcus has got the ball. He hasn't had runners on his shoulder. They haven't been able to cultivate good relationships himself and Slade haven't nope. been able to link up and, and no. Fiku, himself, Fiku's himself, such a good defender himself and Malins the are the closest I could see to it dropped. To, and he's now <laughs> yeah, out yeah. he was the closest in the early yeah. exchanges to maybe reading off what Slade's shape or what uh, what Smith's kind of shape and go is we know that Dombrant has a bit of telepathy with him but he's like you know it just uh, yeah, it, it hasn't worked. Quite, it hasn't worked. They've also a new attack coach in a lot. A guy with a rugby league background whose name escapes me right now, but that hasn't worked no, either. Hasn't. You know, Eddie Jones, yeah, yeah. Eddie Jones is shelling of his whole backroom staff, and then hiring a new one has has left them definitely. At, at, le- at least in the infancy of, of, of developing a side and yeah. from the French defence's point of view getting after Smith shutting down his options yeah. and just one or two phases that'll, they'll have them yeah, kicking if they, if, yeah, really if they, if they have kicking. them kicking the whole time yeah. and, and limiting their scoring potential to like the 15 points they scored last week from all from kicks or something like that then they will be in yeah, a great position. Then they'll position. know it's, it's one or two tries. It's that's one or all. two moments. 20, 20 plus points at home yeah, yeah. In, in Paris with this crowd for the Grand Slam. They, they'll they fancy that task yeah. if they can manage to make the game about it. Um, like obviously getting into that scrap and getting mm-hmm. into that kick heavy approach and box kicking themselves. Those are the trappings. Getting nervy and not really playing your game. Yeah, and just um, getting out muscle. like getting, yeah. Allowing Atoji and Domran to get after your ball to get on top of you. I mean, th- this game is going to be like the, the, the biggest threat that England posed to France is their physicality. And, yeah. and their capacity to make shite of their ball and that's where mm-hmm. France who had that explosive performance in the power game against Ireland in the last time they were in this stadium blowing this very brilliant Irish pack away for, for large parts of that first half they need a similar showing here against England and if they do that against England they'll actually be in a, a better position to win this game than they were that game because England don't have the same offense that As Ireland, Ireland do to come to back respond. at them exactly yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. and um, then the other the other challenge that will be posed to is uh the aerial game again, Jamine. He's brilliant at many, many things. He's not the best fullback in the world uh, at, uh, at just, just owning, the, the high ball. owning those yeah. skies. And we saw Liam Williams last week causing problems. Um, we saw, we Hugo, saw Hugo England, Keenan we saw, and, and the Marcus Irish Smith, back three he, causing he, he, problems. We see Freddie Stewart look very, very good yeah, in the air and, himself. And to be fair to Marcus Smith, like his kicking last week, his bomb kicking was excellent. Was very like good. It was whether, whether, whether to yeah, compete yeah. in the catch or one of the three pointers they got came from Hugo Keenan gathered the catch, but then the follow up was good. Stewart smashes him and then marching straight in for a steal. Pictures like that are what England are going to try and paint. And to be honest, they've been doing that under Eddie Jones since he's come in. The old box kick up to very coordinated chase to try and chop and chop and jackal. You got to be aware of that that uh, that game and Jamine, a big test for him to orchestrate those back three uh, the back three men to try yeah. and diffuse that one of England's it's, ins. It's, that it's, it's the number one challenge, but mm. they'll be thinking to themselves even if England recover a kick in and our twenty-two, manage to get a three or six points yeah, out exactly. of that kicking game. Yeah, it's like, like yeah, you, you've you'll recovered take that. you've recovered the ball. You're on our twenty-two. Try and break us down, yeah. and that that is their great strength. That is what has won, has got them to this position, and that's what they'll back to win them the championship. Yeah. And I'm Shutting sure that's what Sean Edwards will be excited about yeah. more so than you know the flashy kick return tries, whatever. Yes, but it's indeed. like ha, that great set where they only went nowhere for two phases, and then we jackled them. That's that's what he loves to see at his own twenty two. And uh, yeah, the other thing is that the counter rucking game that they bring, the explosive. Yeah. They don't really need to fear England's capacity to get numbers and find the edge too much until if England demonstrates that they do so yeah get after that rook get after that clean ball and create messy ball and then you'll have messy kicks coming your way and that's where you can get your offence going for France no question Um, but from the flip side of things um, England also hope that they have a path to winning this game I think we hope they have a path to winning this game (laughs) yes indeed Um, they come into this one obviously on an interesting ebb I think we'll say they were were pretty bullish in their determination to see the bright side after their uh, defeat it's it's very admirable Uh, optimism from Eddie Jones and the boys and and Jamie 
George yeah. talking about it was his proudest performance in an England shirt. Um, to be fair to them, like they've they've got a bit of stick. Like that. To be fair to Jamie George, he was in that front row, and from that perspective, yeah. it was a bloody great performance yeah, and a lot of confidence pr- to take to Paris. Think where, he was yeah. thinking pretty personally there, yeah. I dare say as well. But like to be fair to them, like there's been a bit of blowback given just their sheer lack of offensive output. Sure, but it kind of reminded me of um, when Ireland uh, in the Autumn Nations Cup went out there and. Uh, lost the game 18-7 and actually the 7 was a late intercept but yeah. it was basically 18 nil, and they dominated possession and they had be- the better of the territory and they their offence ended up scoring nil. Yeah. and we were like oh for God's sake this art it, it just they can't do anything yeah. and then they came out after the game and Andy Farrell was like tears in his eyes I couldn't be proud of the effort and it's like yeah. what are you talking about it kind of reminds me of that in a way it was like the foundation was there. Yeah. Like, they, they they knew they could compete physically with England. That was a huge stepping stone for this Ireland team because they'd been blown away by them so many games in a row. And even though they lost the game, they dominated the, the forward battle and they were able to, to win it. And in a similar way, in the same venue, only with the teams reser- reversed, England might now feel like they have the the um, baseline from which to work in that they defended very well they're the number one turnover generating defence in the tournament their set piece is now looking elite it's looking insanely good Ellis Gaines with the performance from the ages one on one tackles as Um, well like that Simmons tackle on on Ty Furlong like some of those hits are brilliant as well Um, and and, and they have a guy in Itoji who is if not world the best class. player in the world uh, he's very very so close good like very, his, very his close. fact his contribution um, is always just at yeah, least yeah. worthy of a few points just in terms oh. of the amount the amount of his, like his plays just tell and the momentum shift that his uh, little defensive play on the, to stop that uh, potential Doris try last week and what followed was like a 40 odd minute purple patch for England such was the seismic nature of that play and he got after um, them all he unsettled yeah. them in the line out Genj was unsettling Ireland in the scrum They'll so they similar in, yeah, in so both those set pieces because yeah if you can get after a French scrum in Paris that is something yeah. that the French knowledgeable French crowd are are aware of and if, yeah. if the first few scrums can start looking anything like the ones back in Twickenham mm-hmm. last week that's, yeah. and that's the kind of thing that gets a murmur rippling around yeah. rather than the carnival atmosphere of let's win the Grand Slam that's what England need to set into the minds that doubt that lingering doubt if they can start with that and then suddenly France haven't started well they've started conceding a few scrum penalties to Ellis Genge then it's game on that's where England want to yeah. be no question um, and yeah like it, 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 even just uh, going back to that point about the, 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 the confidence that they had from last week they now have a pretty elite foundation, like Italy that we talked about earlier, like Argentina that we maybe discussed as, as being able to kick on from there, like Ireland, uh, you know, eighteen months ago. Sure. They had they they got the defense going, they got the forward pack going. They now have an elite set piece, a very very good defense with some excellent operators, and that now is a foundation from which they can build their offense, and they feel confident in that. Yeah. But it needs it, to build quick. It, like for this game, I mean, going forward, I think they're I think they're actually in a great position to be class come the World Cup sure I think they that's are what Eddie developing. Jones will be reassuring yeah. like, like boards and powers that exactly be exactly he's are, talking yeah. like look at France like it, it really doesn't take that long look at South Africa the last World mm. Cup it doesn't take a full cycle it takes a year and a half mm. to develop a team and yeah. he thinks this is a new team they've already got their foundations they just need to work on the offense and they do but for this game offensive returns so far like in between Scotland game the Wales game and the Ireland game their offense has yielded what one try, one try. Yeah. That that Marcus Smith break off the mall against Scotland, yeah. against That's against enough. Wales they scored yeah. one, which was an overthrow from a line out. Their offense did not manage to score a try yeah. against Ireland. They did not manage to score a try. They managed to to uh, do a kick pressure game that generated turnovers, that generated three pointers, and that's where their scores are coming from. But they haven't been able to score tries. And I think first and foremost, they need to learn one of the lessons from last week that they possibly didn't learn that they should learn yeah, is that they should piece. need to kick the corners. Yeah, they have a great yeah, set yeah. piece. Toji is dominating um, the air. Yeah, like yeah. a Toji v Woki is a big battle, and, and Woki will try and get a playoff, but I'd still like to, to, Toji's James, form is George to a Toji for yeah, Saris, yeah. it's a flawless, and for England, it's been flawless as well. Yeah, yeah. Trust that axis to try and yield some five and seven pointers yeah. for you because away from home in Paris, you're going to need them. You're just going to need them. And yeah. and yeah, that is one of the lessons they, they, to glean from last yeah, week. They're, they're, not, they're not about to turn into a world beating offense no, with of loads course. of shape where they can take it through six or seven phases and open yeah. up this French defense. Mm. I don't see that yeah, coming. So, but this but week. Marcus Smith wins for Quinns all the time. So maybe we could just do that to France and Paris. Yeah, it's, no. It just doesn't yeah. seem likely. I mean, yeah. it is possible. Possible. I still mm. think like the reason I think I'm so confident they'll be good is because they do all have the skills. Like yeah. Ed, S- Ed Smith, Slade, um, Marchant yeah. should be better than it's Noel, been. Noel, even all um, that. Yeah, and yeah. 
and, yeah. and they, they will take some confidence as well from, from that South Africa game they can mine back that far where they actually scored three tries against the world's best defence up yeah. next to this Edwards defence that they dialed in it they dialed it in that day and they managed to score off two two off line outs where they managed to get to the edge really quick like the marchant line that, yeah. that won them that game for the Rafi Quirk try they yeah. will need to produce those kinds of plays but they'll also need to be a little braver and know that if they if they have to resort to the pressure kicking game they can do that effectively it can yield them penalties in the opposition yeah. half that have to become fives and sevens instead of threes. It does. And um, it, like part of it is, like yeah. we were saying, as well as that backing yourself to go for it, the, the macro from their offense is that it hasn't had a rhythm at all. And like no. the Edwards defense is going to try and shut them down. But even if they're going through these one or two phases to try and set up a kick, it like it'll be more effective if they can get a, a, a their head around what kind of tempo they're trying to play with. And with the new halfbacks, they haven't quite settled on that yet. Yeah. We haven't seen, and that's where there's doubt all over the rippling across the back line and across the forward runners. And as much as they're all individually class runners, it's it's not quite gelled yet. And they're gonna hope that maybe some of that sparks into life if they can just be a little bit more deliberate in their tempo off the base. That'll, if their runners are good enough, like Sam Simmons running onto quick ball, like that'll cause problems to any defence, even yeah, a Sean yeah. Edwards defence. So try and be a bit more kind of proactive in setting a tempo when they have the ball and, and obviously clearing rooks, hitting rooks, being mm-hmm. diligent in that regard because Edwards will get after them. But then they can start to kind of put the pieces of their game together and hopefully put the squeeze on France because they're in that beneficial position of having like no weight of expectation and all of the pressure as soon as they get one or two things right all of the pressure shifts to France and then yeah. it's easier to play in that environment yeah um, and so that's the, the offense is the big work on can they mm-hmm. generate points I think yeah you've outlined that they're going to have to um, be it off set piece um, be it off first yeah. and second phase from deeper they're going to have to find a way to find scores be aware that obviously like trying to find scores is one thing but you know Get pay due diligence like Gail Fiku's out there, so don't be reckless with no. it. Yeah, indeed, <laughs> like, and then it's not like, working. It's, don't just keep no, hammering play, away. Play, play the um, kick pressure game, and that's yeah. where you go into like their comfort zone, where they really want to make a game of this is in the fit in the contact area and the physicality and the scrums and the lineouts and the yeah. defense. Yeah, and that like that is that like that's really the the game, and in, in a lot of ways, is whether or not they can bottle up the early explosive start of the French with good defending with perhaps steals at the line out take that set piece away from them I think they will kick for touch when they, when France lay the, put the ball deep into England's half England are going to want to kick not bomb, not bombs bombs are for the offensive half the other half yeah. deep kicks towards the touch line set up line outs attack them at the line out yeah. and if they can get purchased there as Wales did then they can just set. take away a huge platform yeah, if they can the set a toji after their um, line out and also after their half back as well if you can get a toji like a toji v Dupont is high high that's level it. Like stuff it, but a toji is the, mas- the master at, uh, at, at, at snagging a scrum half and, and, and killing that play and, and Dupont is the master at evading yeah. exactly yeah, or that or play. getting snagged and still getting yeah, the ball yeah, away but like, yeah, yeah. I, I told you, if there is a man to stop Dupont doing that, it's probably a toad. Yes, yeah, so um, yeah, yeah. that's certainly an in <laughs> yeah. for them as well, potentially. Yeah, towing that line between just being proactive and aggressive, but also not ill disciplined. They need to stay on the right side yeah. of the whistle as well with and, it. And the, the other thing is turnovers. Like France are obviously going to be playing this helter skelter game. They like to get to the edge. They like to they like to be uh, put it through a lot of hands. They, like to get they their have wingers been, involved. They have yeah. been excellent at the offensive breakdown. But if England can time some steals, they are the top turnover defense in this competition. Itoji is top of the individual stats with nine turnovers in awesome. the competition in I'd four expect games. Expect him to breach ten and before the end of this one. Yeah, yeah. and Don Brandt is tied second on six. With yeah, da- he hasn't with even started. Haven't even played all the games. Yeah, yeah So in England, yeah. do dial in a jackal, and a lot of those are proactive yeah. jackals from that kick game where they kick up a bomb, hit you, get in over you. That's yeah. three points. Um, what yeah. I will say though, from a defensive point of view, is like they still ended up conceding four tries yeah. last week. They have bad habits. They switch off on the short side. They switch off from quick tap penalties. They switch off as soon as the whistle goes. Yeah, they, 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 they switch off too damn do often. That. Yeah, and yeah. France are just like no other team for catching and switching, and switching off. off. Yeah, Dupont no, will be so alive. Even to a that. dialed out kick, um, a little yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. oh pressure relieved. I'll just kick it down the field, and we won't pay attention for the next two, 30 seconds. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, uh, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. they they ha- they're going to have to mm-hmm. produce one of their more effective uh, and focused defensive performances for the whole game to contain this excellent France. Attack. Yeah, absolutely. I would agree with that. Um, yeah, that said, the defense, you know, it, it like it, it, it's a big challenge for England. I, I just think they, they have a lot to play for here. They can, they can take some confidence from these last few weeks and go out there with a mind to try and to create this upset. Well, it's, there's it's, no, it's, there's no reason why not. They it, have the tools. They know they do. It's the um, toughest task for 
the likes of Weenie Antonio and the French scrum, and that who has like relented a little bit since that domination of what of, of Ireland that that, mm. that happened. It's been their most impressive uh, showing, yeah, yeah, indeed. And so England, like Ellis Genge, obviously, just if he can replicate anything like that performance against Tyke Furlong, it would be so big for them. But yeah. they, England, will be conscious of the fact that France have been comfortably dominant in the tight five in all of these games in the yeah. last in the so last week. So if they can remove that, blanket, if they yeah, can remove that from it's, them, it's been a comfort blanket for France dominating yeah. those tight indeed. five collisions and. If England can take that away, all of a sudden the edginess comes. All of a sudden, if the pressure kicking game is on, if they're stealing lineouts and they take a 6 0 lead, we don't know what that looks like. No, for we, France. Don't, we, we don't, don't know what yet. it looks it like. It nearly and came about when Wales, if Wales could have stuck that pass and gone in over and taken that lead, then we would have seen it, but we didn't. Yeah. Um, so England will be looking to try and create that picture for themselves. And, and then, yeah, hoping that they're the team that are kind of forcing France to play a bit and kind yeah. of be proactive and then the kick pressure is, is suddenly the right game because you know so France have to score and they're yeah, pegged exactly. back and, and then all of a sudden yeah, they're yeah. trying to run it from everywhere they yeah. don't really know what they're doing yeah. that's, 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 that's the, the picture yeah. we've seen from that Autumn Nations Cup show and like in these England these La Crunchy matchups that we've seen recently England's pressure game has been able to peg, peg France back and get them play too much in the wrong area and look a little silly in what they're, and reckless in what they're trying to do and then capitalise and that's yeah. the picture for Eddie Jones's men yeah. even with the new team I think it's the same equation no question yeah. No question. how do you see it going uh, I think the gulf between the offences is too great for England to overcome yeah. um, I think France I think England might paint uh, that picture for some amount of minutes I'm worried about their ability to score against this Edwards defence yeah. and I think that France, France will certainly score. score whether it's in the opening quarter as they have been doing or just at before half point, time you're not going to contain them forever yeah, yeah, they'll yeah. find a moment England will switch off in a moment Dupont will, will, will fancy a match up and beat a man and they'll find a try or two or three yeah. and England won't have the ability to generate enough points to respond I think they'll be in this game England I think sure. throughout they'll be in this game but I don't see them actually having the ability to, to, to respond. So how much, what are you seeing then? France by what? Uh, a bit, enough, enough to win the Grand Slam. Well, it can be yeah, one, yeah. it'll be enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I kind of think I see it going somewhere similar. I'm going to back to the home team to get it done and get the France uh, France Grand Slam rolling. I'm hopeful for my Irish, my green lens is, is kind of thinking, no, 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 Eddie has a plan. No, no, he'll <laughs> kick, he'll pressure and France will fold and then England will win by three or five points and then it's Ireland's year Eddie, right. Eddie does um, have a plan no I know that we, we shall see yeah, no, if I know it comes that. to I, I, my, my, th- my head is, is, plan scre- last week my head is screaming France despite my heart <laughs> shouting d- defiantly that England might do it yeah um, and that is a rare thing for your heart to shout yeah, never um, has it been heard shouting such things I know yeah um, and on Paddy's day of all things it's, it's very confusing <laughs> um, but uh, no I, I'm fancying France for this one I think they're good value for a Grand Slam this year they deserve, I think it. They, they deserve it and they deserve yeah. it based on uh, that that game in Paris with us, to be honest, that Ireland, that wonderful, wonderful test match that was seen the world over. I think they they did got the job done then and have passed a few a couple of tricky away tests since then. And I think this one will just uh, I think it'll come a little easier. To be honest, uh, my my head is saying that I think they might actually be able to get get on top early and and be way too much for England I think they might even win it by more than a score if, if, if England's offence struggles the way it has yeah I, um, I don't I don't disagree I think that's entirely possible yeah. but listen let us know how you guys think it'll go uh, do you think that Ireland have a chance of sneaking the tournament yet or should we <laughs> focus our ambition solely on the triple crown yes do you, are France going to do the slam are England going to come back let us know all your thoughts down below in the comments. Please be sure to like the vid. But uh, yeah, with that, we're going to move on from the Six Nations. Park it entirely. We will be back with our reviews next week uh, of, of the championship as a whole. We'll do our usual team of the tournament stuff and sure. all that fun stuff that we do after a big tournament um, and uh, looking back on the games as well. So be sure to tune in for that. But we are going to move on now to the tier two the tier two yeah yeah because rugby Europe's been wrapping up and those rugby world cup permutations have been getting very interesting absolutely yes and I I do want to apologise at this point in the show unfortunately um, technical issues have left us without a functioning camera at this point we're just up against the clock and we can't uh, get the camera working so unfortunately this portion of the show is is going to be uh, audio only we'll hopefully get some video involved um, but such as, such as it is that's the way it goes hopefully yeah. you guys enjoy anyway um, and we will by the way uh, by way of announcement I know there's been people asking we will get it up on audio platforms in, in, in due course we want to kind of tidy up the audio first but it, it, that, that is on the way yeah. um, so we will certainly do that but without any more ado we are going to move on and discuss Rugby Europe yes. um, because it was a huge weekend in the Rugby Europe Championship uh, the REC uh, it was just 
an, an incredible weekend in a tournament full of incredible weekends. It's true. Yeah. Uh, another two nail biting one score games that went down to the last play. Um, and first of all, saw Georgia edging the uh, challenge of the Oaks in Bucharest, getting an important away win despite not being perfect by any stretch. True. Um, however, the main show was in Madrid, where Spain put together an historic performance, claiming victory over Portugal and hence the World Cup position as well. It was a fabulous victory for Los Leones and it's it, it just coloured the competition brilliantly. Last week did it feel really like did. the crescendo it really of did. an amazing, amazing sequence of games. Really. Yes, it was. Yeah, um, In the context of this two-year journey towards Rugby World Cup qualification, it was decisive in that as well. So it did feel very much like, in, like a kind of... Well, it was penultimate, but it felt like a decisive uh, weekend in the in the Rugby Europe and in the Rugby World Cup stakes. Obviously, we're deprived of that one Russia-Netherlands game, but that's not yet. It doesn't matter at all in the context of either of those tournaments. But uh, yeah, there were two massively uh, consequential games, and we're going to start, <coughs> excuse me, in Bucharest with uh, Romania twenty-three and Georgia. 26, a three-point game in, in the El Clasico of this tournament. If there is one, it's the Oaks and the Lelos, and it was it was a tight one. It was a very very much an arm wrestle. It's good to see the progress that the Romanian pack have made, that the Romanian team have made, and the strides they've made in general on defense, on offense, making this a very uh, very scrappy one for Georgia, and it was only a few moments of class that uh, that dug them out, mainly from, from Nini Ashvili himself in, in those two sequences that led to crucial scores that uh, that was kind of the difference between the sides, but it wasn't much. No, it wasn't much at all. I mean, Romania again. It's it's this early start syndrome. Yeah. They, they they just start too slow, and it's this true. is now a consistent problem for them. Unfortunately, um, gets conceding uh, conceding. Was it twenty one six? They yeah, were go, down at that one stage, indeed. and it was very early that that was in, the case. And, in, uh, yeah. Indeed, and uh, they they they, well, they one was criminal. The the, the nine it was loves and ids as one to open. They yeah, count. there was like nine on nine action, and he's like, you can't be getting charged down by the nine on an exit box kick in early doors. Where's your Killer, where's what's going on? Yeah, and then well the, taken from Loves and Isn't those but, sloppy yeah. little brain farts in the early stage of the game have coloured their 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 campaign, uh, campaign yeah. a little bit. They had one against Portugal, um, yeah. and they they obviously started very slowly against Spain. They'll True. probably look back on that as a reason why ultimately they didn't end up claiming the automatic uh, qualification spot and are going into that repechage competition should they get the win this weekend. Um, but from George's point of view, I mean. There, I mean, I've seen a bit of blowback. There, there's anxiety among Georgian supporters that things just haven't been going their way um, yeah. uh, so far this year, um, which is obviously unfortunate. Um, but from from the positive side of things, their offense is still looking pretty damn good. Like they scored, they, they had that charge down try from Lobson Dadza, but I think every other try came first phase off a of scrum. Curious yeah, enough, yeah, yeah. Um, so their their offense definitely has progressed to to a much better stage and it's helped obviously massively by the presence of uh, Nini Ashvili yeah. but digging out that try um on 74 minutes when uh, they picked they picked blind through Jalagonia and uh, he just slips this pass to Tato and Tato put uh, uh, puts a out the back slip pass that he does he does give put a little too high, but Niniash really has the skill just, just to rein the ball yeah. in and then feed uh, feed his man on the outside, uh, Tabat Sadza, for, yeah. for yet another try for Same. him. He set up um, both wingers, didn't he? That's exactly what you yeah. want to do. And he's doing that week in, week out at top tours level as well. He's looking very, very dangerous and elusive and just with good instincts as well. He was like unselfishly creates the try and gives the pass and there it is. And that's five and seven pointers that are so crucial at test level. And it, it, yeah, in a three-point game, those were the differences. Uh, the other try actually early doors was Adza, captain getting over. It was a nice little short range switch that put yeah. him over as well from from close Those range. Little switch Again, games, the old Romania kicking problems. themselves yeah. because like yeah they, they were defending better towards the tail end but they were letting in a few few soft shoulders in those early exchanges and Sharik Adz is a hard man who's going to run over any soft shoulder like that so yeah they'll have they'll have some misgivings about just the way they started the game and allowed Georgia to get on top and assert themselves and um, but take nothing away from like their own offense the fact that they did get back into it the mall as we were highlighting very effective very very effective in for them against what is normally a fearsome uh, Georgian pack but yeah Romania yeah. took them on and, and got some dividends there well this is it I mean from George's point of view I mean they had that that threesome of Nariashvili Mamukashvili um, sorry Mamukashvili and uh, Gigashvili uh, yeah. in, in as one two, uh, one, two and three with uh, Jayani and uh, Mikatautsa um, who have been pretty consistently in the team as a tight five 
and I think it's probably safe to say no longer the best type five in this competition. Yeah. In in fact, arguably a weak point for Georgia. Arguably their backline with the, with its combination of physicality and skills, um, along with their all star uh, star studded back row, are are strengths for them. Their halfbacks are great. Their tight five, where it has been traditionally such a strength for them, is kind of becoming a weakness. Their mall is a disaster on both sides, offensively, defensively. It's disorganized. It's messy. Um, it's not functioning the way it should. They conceded two bad mall tries in this game. They were consistently unable to set up their own ones. It's true. Um, yeah, so it's all th- true. That that's a massive concern, obviously. Um, but I think around the field there are, there are points of confidence for them. I think they do have to to rotate some personnel to try some new guys in that tight five area. That's been that's been really where the Oaks in was in this yeah. game. And too many um, of those under twenties and stuff have been looking so good for so long that yeah. uh, you got to feel particularly your, well your grievance more so than props even because they're normally normally their props are, are game enough anyway. But that hooker, you think with the front, front row stocks that Georgia tend to produce, the, the hookers have not been as uh, as barnstorming as we've seen at te- at test level in recent times no, just George the, George and hookers compared to hooker, the hookers exploding onto the scene from everyone else are very much old school uh, the yeah. old school mould of hooker and it's just it's not as good it's not as good as what Spain have in that position yeah, at the moment it's, 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 and it, we'll talk about that when we look ahead to the games this weekend um, but that that is that was the weak point for George in this game but defensively they hustled hard they, they gave up some penalties but they didn't let uh, Romania in for any real backline tries no. their, their tackling was good obviously Romania did miss Vavasa in that midfield they did that spark um, was, was yeah. definitely well, well he saw what the spark can do with Nineveh really had the ball and, and he has been that guy for them and yeah. like Tamani played really well but you're right they they uh, they did miss him and his just contributions in how to unpick because George defended very well out in those those channels as well and did manage to swallow them up for large periods of, of that game yeah no question tight um, one though tight it, one out in Bucharest it was it was <laughs> and, and Georgia I like I, I, I understand where the criticism is coming from I think they need to be more organised at set piece I think they need to be more physical to get back to their roots to some extent Sure. But I like where they've gone, and I yeah. still think that that the fact that they scored four tries, that they were scored three of them directly off set piece, yeah. like being able to pick up cheap scores when you're not necessarily on top in the game is not something Georgia have been good at, and I think it's it something is that's beneficial. useful. Beneficial, like yeah. you're looking ahead to a World Cup where they're going to be playing teams like Fiji and Wales and Australia. I think they're in a better position to mix it with those teams actually now than they were a few years back even though their pack and their type 5 is probably functioning a little bit better yes. but no question that's an area that they'll, that they'll look to rectify in the times to come yeah, absolutely. and uh, Romania just 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 a little shy just a little shy yeah. but they, they did their they actually did their campaign a little bit of harm in it just given the way the other game went but uh, they have work to do in that last week but it's not doom yeah. and gloom for them they've uh, probably they've missed out on, on second but uh, they still have a World Cup to fight for and they'll still be in that scrap and they're still very much a coming team they, their progress is good that's a better showing in this particular matchup than we've seen in recent years in terms of what George have been bringing like uh, it's good to see the Oaks improving and getting to the point where all of the games are competitive here like we had on the opening day we had Georgia drawing to Portugal in Tbilisi and that was a shock and now yeah. we're seeing that all of these teams are, are rising and kind of making this competition as exciting as it has been absolutely um, but that was that game and then the main event the main event of the weekend arguably even, even including Six Nations footy had to be the matchup of Spain and Portugal in Estadio Central UCM Madrid uh, on Sunday it was a stunning occasion it, the, the uh, place was I know there were still some technical COVID restrictions there didn't appear to be many en- empty seats in the place it was yeah. sold out packed to the rafters huge support for the Spanish and it was it was great as well that the game f- uh, was on Sunday by itself yes, it really not, helped not the competition any Six Nations yeah, stuff yeah, yeah. It, it captured the imagination of the rugby loving public in a way that this competition should have been doing this whole time because yeah. it's awesome um, but now is doing and I, I remember seeing one tweet after Words, like talking all this talk about uh, you know Georgia into the Six Nations and watching this game between Spain and Portugal I can't help but think that the best solution for all teams is to pump money into this Rugby Europe Championship because it's so good yeah, and indeed. this game was just like it, the eyes of the rugby world were on it and it was a wonderful game it was it really was it's absolutely just the Iberian Derby that we were building up all, all season long as being decisive and it surely was that and it was no less skillful for it it didn't tighten up these two teams came to play ball in like 38-28 or 33-28 that's as a high scoring rambunctious game with, with shots fired on either side give and take it was the, the rivalry was very much there but also the skill sets were on display from both um, and yeah it was it was the, the same problems for Portugal that kind of led to them not being able to conquer 
Spain away from home and that's it's a big ask and there were only five points adrift at the end but you could see the disparity disparity between the tight five in particular in terms yeah. of physicality in terms of power and then obviously highlighted by that great try from Spain as well where the, <laughs> the opening score yeah, prop coming ram, rampaging through and scoring and you're thinking oh right yeah. that might be the difference maker here in terms of like I love watching Portugal's back smooth the pillow around and there was moments in this game where that was it about what was it about Marques finding a lovely pass mm. to his 13 for one of the tries but yeah the tight five performance from Spain was stellar yeah and the whole pack I mean John yeah. Zavala as you point out picking down through the middle um, I think the key difference it was the contacts were being yeah, won they were just so they, readily from, from, from the opening kickoff they you knew they weren't shrinking they yeah. were rising to the occasion they had their fans behind them they had the, the scorn of what happened four years ago on their minds and the scorn of what um, happened last year that was probably why you saw them run the ball from everywhere yeah. was just respect enough for like we're probably like we're good kickers but kicking to this Portugal team in the sunshine even over at home yeah. is probably not wise like no, we can run and, at them and maybe like, get purchased and, and um, they, they, they were they were rising to the pitch but they knew the threat that Portugal possessed and they yeah. definitely definitely knew they had to make it to the World Cup this time around yeah. and it's been like it was an incre- it's been an incredible turnaround for them it was a brilliant brilliant performance from that whole forward pack dominating collisions bringing energy from the off and that was the difference when they had the ball even though they aren't as necess- they weren't as flash as what um, as what Portugal would try and do in terms of getting to the edge and and going 90 on the skills and offloading game they can't they do have that game Spain but that's not what this was about it was about tempo and power yeah. and they looked so comfortable on the ball the Portuguese defense never got the respect from Spain Spain never kicked it they pretty much ran it from everywhere and uh, they were always comfortable whereas Portugal when they had the ball they were still brilliantly skilled and they got that try which is like all helter skelter to respond get yeah. to the edge so and much still so many having, sets of hands that yeah, went through and still so having to throw the extra pass yeah. because they were Spanish were still coming and it was great that they managed to execute that play and they had some other good scores as well um, Betancourt actually with his with his grey scrum cap came into the team and contributed really well got a nice try Marques played brilliantly That's but right. they were always under pressure even when they had the ball you always felt that Spanish line speed and power was just causing them problems yeah, true. and they were going to find it difficult to keep up because when the ball was on the other side Spain yeah, were that, so that, comfortable that 10 point buffer um, they were holding on to and keeping them at yeah. bay with for most of that second half with, with or us kicking over a three yeah, one point they, to extend it they, out. they, they yeah, routinely yeah. responded to Portuguese scores with scores of their they own. They did. And that was and Portugal that was couldn't get it's, out. It's good yeah. game management. It's just that's that's what you got to do in these tight contacts because there's there's not much between these sides and both have different kind of attributes and both can get plays off. And like we saw last year, how when Portugal run hot, they can actually run up quite a score. And you could see in the Spanish mindset and game plan how they respected that fact and yeah. how they were going to be no no this is our time this is what we're going to assert and be dominant and proactive in that and they did they were they they managed to assert their stamp pretty early on with that opening score and hold Portugal at bay for the for the rest of the time it was just at arm's length yeah. they were managing to keep them and yeah Portugal fired back with all the heart and all the courage and the skill and speed that you'd expect from them and players like Marques and Portela did have good moments as well and like it's just it's a really good matchup and it's a really really colourful great game they grabbed that score right at the death and you could see in their speed because it was only like a few seconds left to get that drop kick off and they did manage to yeah, like yeah. not many teams would get that off I've seen teams score in that exact scenario and be a little bit lackadaisical to get to the, the well, drop to fair, goal, they, they knew but, they uh, knew their World Cup was on the indeed. line and to be fair to Spain as well like they, they, they did ultimately give up their yellow card in the lead up to that try yes, that they always, yeah, they do, always do but that, they defended they? really well for about 10 minutes when Portugal were knocking on the door and things were a little nervy and they had slowed down on the offensive end and they were exchanging threes and you felt like a Portuguese try was coming but I think they held them out in their in their 22 for about five or six or seven minutes yeah. and, and made it so that they it was just one, uh, one, one play one Hail Mary play that Portugal got from their own end and Spain swallowed them up and got one of the only jackal steals <laughs> that was got the whole day was secured at the very death of the game yeah. but it was a deserved result their pack are awesome they're dynamic they're combining skill speed and power really really yeah, well but we're two very f- fine halfbacks very very fine halfbacks yes. to guide that half uh, that uh, pack around the pitch like, like, yeah, like, we, yeah we've raved about Marques and Portela and Aprosidza and um, and and Tato, uh, uh, yeah. yeah. but um, geez, they're, they're, they're as good as anyone in this yeah, country. Ordas and Ruiz, yeah, um, Rue, even yeah they're, yeah, they're really, really good. They move the ball. They're they're quite calm as well under pressure and like slotting a few nice t- touchline conversions as well. From from Ordas's point of view, very, very much uh, part of part and parcel of what you want, especially with a big meaty pack of forwards like that. You want to see those halfbacks bringing that assured kind of control over it and like yeah. so so that some of the guys can afford to see red in terms of being violent and being aggressive 
expensive but not see red as far as card color because you want your your halfbacks to just assure be, be the calm in that chaos and they've improved in that area like we were we were very critical last year with good reason of their capacity to blow games before they even start by by giving away ridiculous ill-disciplined red cards and that really got came close to scuppering their campaign for that World Cup er, very early on last year in some of those uh, Rugby Europe games in the first half but uh, since then they've really managed to turn it around it's been a really yep. like a really good like with a few bad habits still lingering they've still managed to eke out results and now they're on a, on a win streak that's by far they're yeah, they, the form side in this they, competition they dropped, they've they set dropped out the opening shoot. three games they yeah. went 0-3 and, and they've now got a six game win streak they look imperious yeah. they look brilliant their, their tight five looks arguably the best in the competition and when they're playing their particular brand they're playing with style and speed it does lend itself to, to, to great footy yeah. and then those lines I'll watch them all day oh, yeah, God, yeah. what a player he is yeah, um, yeah. yeah they're, fa- they're a fabulous team it great was fabulous scenes, scenes at full time yeah. fans running onto the field it, like this rugby community has been building for years and years and years yeah. they thought they were going to make the World Cup the last time out they were it was such a good they were punch vexed by that, that Belgian yeah, game yeah. and then the ineligible players and everything that went on it was just it was a bit of a heartbreaker for them it was a complete heartbreak for them let's be real um, but to, to to see those scenes of relief and and uh, and uh, a, a ex- ecstasy at the end of the game it was just a joy to watch for a rugby fan there were players being hoisted onto shoulders and it's sculling true. pints it's instantly true. after full time yeah, it was just yeah. it was magical yeah. and then by contrast for, for us Lobos like this is this is the equivalent of that Spanish hurt that they got four years ago. This yeah. team, for me, they've like played sparkling footy throughout. They've been the the talking point of it. They've been the reason that captured the majority, our imagination. Yeah, well, they certainly yeah. they've been the reason that the games have taken a shape where it's like thirty to twenty something as yeah. opposed to like sixteen twelve. You know, like yeah. it, that, th- those those guys have been the reason. Like they've scored three hundred and thirty five points in this year's competition, which is more than anyone by more yeah. than forty points, and yet. They're, they're going to miss out. They're currently sitting in third, just yeah. but with Romania with a game in hand against the Dutch. It's looking that is their campaign scuppered, yeah. bar, barring an historic result for the Dutch <laughs> that doesn't yeah. seem they, forthcoming. But they've been they've been brilliant. Like Marquesh had a great game as well as having a fantastic two years for for this team. And like uh, he he his uh, he'll be one of the more upset because he's uh, I think he's like thirty three. Yeah, he's, he's not going go to he's not gonna go to a World Cup yeah. now. But guys like Portela might, and yeah. guys like Appleton might, and like they got to keep playing this game the way they're playing it because they're getting an awful lot right and uh, to be honest as much as they lost this Iberian derby and now they're out it was, they'll reflect on it and think it wasn't here it wasn't this week that they, they lost it it was the two games the double header against Romania is what yeah, has sunk their ship one of those they games. had to and it was the yeah. game last year truly where yeah. they had it won and then they had their adrenaline dump because they were two scores up and then they had nothing left in the gas tank for the last quarter and blew it then. And yeah. that's when you really zoom out in the macro, it's, it's those but little they, moments. But they were so young in their development at that stage. Yeah. And it's probably just come too early for them. Yeah. But but listen, like they, they, they've they been very close this year. They are, for my money, like the skill, the scintillating oh, play. Yeah. Guys like Marta plucking balls out of the air. It's different gravy. These guys are supremely talented, really skillful, joys to watch. They would have been brilliant at the World Cup. For my money, they are without doubt the best team ever to not qualify for a World Cup. Yeah, just um, looking at it, it puts just, the tournament yeah. in, a, in a curious position as well. It does. But like compared to four years ago, when you had uh, you know Russia, it, Georgia, and Russia went to the World Cup representing rugby Europe, and the repechage representative was Germany because of yeah. all the ineligible players. Now you have. Georgia and Spain, two quality teams, going to the World Cup rep and rugby. Europe. Likely Romania, and Romania going to the, going to the Shires, Shires, with Portugal with, missing out. Yeah, that's awesome. Much and Russia better. aren't, yeah. aren't but no, like there's a similar team to four years ago, and they're missing out. Like they're, they're, there's they're, the quality in this tournament on show has been stellar. It's been the best uh, rugby couple of years of rugby Europe I think we've ever been treated to. And yes, congratulations to Spain. And with that, they do manage to to get the big Q next to their name and qualification. They are going to the World Cup, uh, which leaves the World Cup qualifiers looking like that we have Georgia on 39 already qualified over the two years Spain then on 29 points also already qualified in second place they're going to be joining our group in Ireland with Ireland and the Springboks and Scotland as well I think they're going straight into that one so fair play to them we'll look forward to seeing them at the World Cup by the way that that, that World Cup group between Ireland uh, that's probably the toughest World Cup group ever it's going to beat out like Georgia I think it's Samoa the other game team in it Tonga 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 with Israel Folau and Charles and all that World Cup pedigree that they're bringing yeah yeah. a a, a smorgasbord of of, of legends of of the game are going to be playing for Tonga this Spanish 
Spanish team are incredible. Then you've got Ireland, Scotland, South Africa. And on the other end, you've got Georgia in, as they were last time, few years ago. Fiji, Wales, Australia, and the Repechage team, who are likely to be Romania. Yeah. Two amazing World Cup groups, and the, the real strength of this competition. Like we, we saw Russia hustle hard in the last World Cup, and Georgia had a kind of a stuttering performance. This time around, I think Rugby Europe is very well placed to make a splash at the World Cup. Absolutely. And um, uh, you can see now that, that uh, Portugal are, for, for the time being, before this week's games, sitting on 26 points with the small Q potentially next to yeah. their name, but not there yet, because Romania this week will be facing the Dutch, the Netherlands. Which, tell, uh, you tell you know, what will annoy Portugal is that they only got given four points for their win over Russia in that cancelled game, even though they probably they would have got racked five. up five. Now, that yeah. said, it's, it might be academic, because yeah. that would have put a four-point gap between Romania and I'm sure Romania will get five themselves yeah, indeed, and even yeah. if not it might have been head to head on the on the if it's, yeah, tie, if it's head so to head, head then to it's head Romania yeah, that Romania's going to yeah. do it so you know Portugal in the very precarious position and probably with the writing on the wall Romania still with work to do but ultimately they, they might be able to scrap their way into the repechage and then there's definitely more work to come in that and then the other table that uh, is worth a look is just at the standings in terms of this tournament this year because uh, Spain still sitting uh, you know just atop there with 17 points and uh, Georgia just behind on 15 those two meet this week to decide who who manages to take the trophy home it's normally Georgia but you know who's betting against Spain with this win streak they're on and the form guide is is definitely all Spain and Portugal then on 12 points in third same same scenario there Romania still with a game to play only three points adrift and it's against the Dutch so probably fourth is where Portugal are going to end up on both tables and Romania might be able to leapfrog up the Netherlands then on four points themselves courtesy of the walkover over Russia and Russia out of the count because of all manner of other ex- extenuating circumstances that we're not going to go into but that is the situation for this uh, this year's Rugby Europe Championship which is not without pedigree as well obviously we've no. been all dizzy about the Rugby World Cup uh, kind of permutations which are more exciting and more relevant to these teams but a bit of silverware like certainly if you're in Spain's shoes and never having won this comp in ages and just you know yeah, and this yeah. is a lot to play for against a Georgia side that have been dominant here a chance for silverware and then to take that on as momentum into next year and into that World Cup absolutely um, but with that we're going to look ahead to this week Yes, and it's nice to be back with you all visually um, for, for such a time as we may be allowed. Yep. Um, uh, apologies, we're having all kinds of ta- uh, technical issues with our camera this morning. So uh, unfortunately, we're just so far up against the clock. We're just racing to get to get as much of this done as we can. Yep. Shane here has gigs. It's Patrick's yep. Day. Patrick's Day, got to um, go work. Yep. Indeed. <laughs> um, but we are, um, we are going to chat now um, about the Netherlands and Romania, um, right. which obviously is you know a big game. It's winning in for the Oaks, winning That's into right. that repechage position and, and uh, win and win for the Netherlands which is a big big card enough that they've yeah. not managed to capture just yet <laughs> as well um, yeah Saturday March 19th obviously that's going to be the National Rugby Centre in Amsterdam which we're getting to know well nice surface clean surface we're getting into springtime now so expect decent running rugby re- weather Absolutely. as well um, that's kickoff is 12.15 um, that's uh, thir- one fifteen local time 12.15 kind of Universal Standard Time or GMT um, and yeah so early afternoon game on the Saturday Good, you know good what, I'm, what I'm loving about this now from Rugby Europe is that they've learned from last week at least maybe this this was already pre-scheduled but last yeah. week they had that game that was watched by a, a lot of the rugby loving world because all the Six Nations yeah. games were over now neither of their games are clashing with Six Nations yeah, this, just this just takes place proper, before you know? It's yeah. the curtain it was raiser the same, to the curtain same grievance raiser. you had when the women's uh, Six Nations was on for so long, standing right next to the, men, the, the men's Six Nations and therefore not doing very well. Um, it's just a shame, really, is, is what it is when, when that happens, because they're good games, it's a good product, and it's just annoying when you have it clashing with the Six Nations, because then no, no eyeballs are going to be at it. You're sacrificing a bit of the, uh, you know, Yeah, no, absolutely, and we will be talking about the women's Six Nations next week. But we are going to talk now about the game itself, um, obviously, Romania will be hoping just for a, a physical, drama-free showing and not a maybe, repeat maybe of a fast the... start this time as well. Um, yeah, well, not a repeat of, of what happened four years ago, as you'll recall, when it was just a, before all the player ineligibility stuff, Spain had a game against Belgium, which was just a procession after their big win over Romania. And yet, 
the whistle went against them and life went against them and they lost the plot and they lost the game and yeah. it was extraordinary at that stage what had been going on this is Romania true. will not want a repeat of that no maybe get a Portuguese ref in the middle that could happen next. Yeah. Um, but yes there was all kinds of those kind of dramatics going on the the Romanians and um, you know they, they've been good at being calm in the chaos this uh, this campaign really over the last couple of years you'd expect it should be a drama free uh, exercise even if the whistle goes against them they don't seem to be the kind of team with the temperament to kind of compound that and they do just have far too much quality uh, they do and like, on paper for they, this Dutch team indeed they, there are kind of there are levels to this game I mean yeah. they, they'll they'll fancy this all over the pitch of course I'd love to see Va- Vavasa back in with, with Tamani but then That'd they've also good. got guys like Dumitru Onutu Simeone Escu looking very nice very as well, well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a lot of guys who run very well and uh, that speed will, will match up poorly against a Dutch defence that hasn't been able to yeah. cope but to even, cope, even um, if the speed doesn't do it the power is yes. a big discrepancy as well because like the Dutch boys aren't aren't sure and powerful a power they're big lads but uh, yeah just as far as fitness and cardio and control just, just and, intensity and, it's just yeah. it's a question of levels I mean, yeah. you get in, in, right across rugby, you get guys who look like there's a guy who looks like, you know, Danny Cipriani mm. at such and such a level. Yeah. But once you go above your level, um, you, are, you it doesn't really matter what style of player you are or what type of what type of player you are. You just yeah. end up outmatched and flailing. It's and true. this Dutch team has been like a level or two below the rest yeah. of the teams in this competition. And so despite the fact that they have obvious qualities that, you know, oh yeah, you could see them being a really good team. Like you could see them in the second tier, like run up a score on some of these other teams. They have good skills. They can they can move the ball. They're they decent. They try home. to look to move the ball. Yeah, Their home pitch, as we were saying, is a, is a, a nice um, kind of 4G-ish surface with big in goals so you can kick and run and all of that yet and um, they, they, they don't have the the intensity and the, the quality of athlete really to cope with this upper level pro trying to push to be in world everyone cup pushing standard. for a world cup yeah, and it's yeah, go yeah. do or die every week for every team and they're just these guys are the bonus point or nothing and yeah. bonus point, not just <laughs> bonus point but points difference on the line for a large large part of the campaign for all these teams so yeah the dutch have been uh, on the receiving end of a bit of a baptism of fire over these last couple of years but credit to them they've fa- managed to find some scores and they've played yeah. with a bit of hustle they, and a bit they, of heart. they usually um, hustle well for about 15 minutes yeah, it's, about <laughs> it's like yeah, it's, it's usually true. around then yeah, that it so just starts not, start not pushing cope. for 24 yeah. Yeah, to yeah, see yeah. that and, and that would like if they can manage to be competitive and maybe take a three or six lead then maybe Romania well, panic and are like why aren't we winning give, this give, game give Portugal um, just some hope you know like yeah, to yeah. take Campbell and Jordi Hop on the edge can they find an early score can they move the ball and catch Romania off guard it seems like a very oh, improbable so, outcome um, but the Lobos reaching, will be hoping for it just looking at what that, that <laughs> offensive mall for Romania was oh, doing to the Georgians yeah, yeah. like it'll it'll, it'll Oh, perforate every aspect of that Dutch pack just given how much the Georgians were struggling to contain them so yeah, yeah. kick the corners there will be no three pointers from a Romanian point yeah. of view me thinks it's just go to the corner get this go done. to the corners get um, get your red zone tries wear them down physically and then uh, get uh, wonderful players like Simeone Escu or whoever they've selected on the edge to just run through run them through. Yeah. Um, or around then, them or <laughs> over them kick it in behind <laughs> to, they drop it on the toe yeah. and chase is a good option in the, on this ground mm-hmm. as well as we've noted before because of the yeah. deep deep in goals so go for that but uh, yeah, be proactive be brave get mm-hmm. this done it'll very much be a I'd say just given given Romania's temperament, I'd say the focal point from the coaching staff this week will just be drilling that into them. It's like even if it goes against us, just stick to the process, get it done. It will it will, it will happen come. for you. Yeah. Be patient. And to be fair, that's been the great strength of this team. They're a uniquely well positioned team to not panic. Yeah. If to be honest, the be patient it, mantra is um, probably the, the only negative of it is the starting slow flip side of yes. it. But uh, but in this contest, I think it, it'll be. Uh, easily enough uh, the right thing to do and yeah. I think it'll come I mean, good for if, them if, on if, multiple occasions against the Dutch I, I think you're probably right and the mm. Lobos obviously hoping for something else but unfortunately they, they have left it too late and it, it it's it's impossible to imagine the, the, the Dutch coping it's more impossible than Italy winning a Six Nations game yeah. the Dutch actually Such has been has the so, level yeah, 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 the yeah. golfing class and just the um, marked improvement of all the other teams ahead of them yeah. as well as this being their first mm. foray into the top well not the top but the higher level than the, t- mm. the tier three below it's it's, yeah. it's, you know, it's, it's been a, a learning experience for the Dutch and now they get to, to they play this game finish up and then they'll get to put their whole sort of campaign on ice and Assess and yeah. the, the, thankfully the Russia situation, which there's nothing thankful about it really. It's appalling, but from their point of view, Russia being kicked out means they have another go. They have another go. They have a yeah. year to kind of 
to figure out what they need to do to sort just to close that gap yes. a little bit. What are they good back. at? What do they need to keep yeah. doing? What are they struggling and and where are the deficits? Because we can point out yeah, a few, in, but in, like inten- it, it, intense uh, endurance and fitness training needed over the winter if they are to compete. And I know some of these yeah. guys are only semi pros slash amateur, and so it's tough to 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 mix it with the likes of these Georgians playing in the top couturs. Yeah, but if they can level the gap at all, I think they'll look to do that in the off season. However, for this week, I am backing Romania to yes, as secure a, as a Ro- Europe three. Yeah. Yeah. and the repechage place with I, a comfortable I win. would back that but how, who do you got maybe you're a really aspirational dreamer of a Portuguese fan and you're just thinking no I think <laughs> no, that's I think, you <laughs> I think the Dutch are due I think they're due uh, let us yeah. know any of that in the comments down below <laughs> we got we got the Oaks winning this one and managing to sneak their way into the third place on the repechage and from there likely qualifying because it looks like this, this European pedigree in, in tier 2 is just a little bit different from what's going on even in South America which has improved markedly yeah, no, yeah, yeah. are you back in the loser of USA Chile to beat Romania in a, in a, clutch, in a clutch match, match? no <laughs> not really I mean Chile have impressed me too but I do think there's, Chile there's will levels. probably beat the US I think if, they will if it's USA but, um, v Romania that's just not, not going to go, go well for no, the I don't, I don't think so um, um, yeah no Romania look very impressive so yeah hoping that they uh, roll on and uh, and manage to make a good account of themselves both in this game and then repechage and then on to, to World Cup carrot that's what they're still focused on they did themselves a bit of damage against Spain but it's not irreparable nothing damage. fatal nothing yeah. fatal and now they're looking to partner Georgia in the World Cup group with Fiji and uh, and Wales and Australia yes, which is just colourful so exciting that we're going to get to see each um, time but world- yeah um, there was meant to be obviously it's not going to happen but there was meant to be Portugal and uh, Russia happening this week which isn't going to happen four point win for uh, for Portugal has been awarded they'll be slightly vexed they might have thought well we can grab five out of that lot but it would have uh, added some conceivable intrigue to the match in the Romania but as it is it's four and yeah. they have no complaints they no, lost really. out last week they lost two um, two in a row to Romania that's where their their horse has fallen indeed um, yeah. but putting all the World Cup stuff aside there is still a competition to play for and it is all going to be decided on Sunday 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 which yeah. is just fabulous from a, yeah. from, a, from, a, from a fan's point of view we have our Super Saturday in the Six Nations which we discussed but we're also going to be treated to a wonderful show on Sunday between Georgia and Spain for all the marbles. Winner takes all. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's, it's, very, it's very exciting. Spain are the form team in this competition. They have looked brilliant. They haven't, uh, by the way, they, they have never won this competition. This competition began in, in, in the, at the turn of the century. They have a couple of runner-ups, but every year except one has been won by either Georgia or Romania. Yeah. In 2004, actually, Portugal, of all teams, did win it on their way to that qualification in 07 that yes. they made in that World yeah, Cup. Yeah. Um, but... Um, since then it's been like almost all Georgia Georgia are going for five in a row they're also going for 11 of the last 12 yeah it's been um, a domineering showing from Georgia in the yeah. last decade plus in this tournament but the form side are Spain coming in yes. they're ro- rocking in with a win streak and, and coming to Tbilisi with you know Port- they ju- they beat Portugal in decisive one they saw what Portugal managed to, to get out of Georgia away from home so there's definitely there's some silverware on the line here and I'm excited to see how both these t- uh, teams take the field um, the field in question obviously Sunday March 20 it's going to be at Avchala Stadium in Tbilisi and uh, kickoff is 11 o'clock that's uh, our time and uh, then yeah 3 o'clock local time kickoff so uh, an afternoon Sunday afternoon game for all the marbles as far as the Rugby Europe trophy that has been a perpetual uh, mainstay in the Georgian trophy cabinet for so long and Spain will have notions of dragging that thing back to to Madrid they're they're posting on their Twitter we can become European champions which they can it's it's very true it's just it's, it's an awesome prospect and this team has been on a hell of a journey over the last few years finishing as runner, runners up in the competition in 2019 and 2020 they had that slip up last year where discipline got the best of them but then went 0-3 t- in their, their World Cup campaign but turned it around 6-3 and yeah. three now 6 straight wins and uh, yeah a win here would be yet more history for them um, a first in Tbilisi and a first ever ever Rugby Europe Championship for Santiago Santos's men that yes, would be the, uh, that would be a hell of a story it and is true they are good enough I mean they, we'll, we'll, we're going to look at sort of the the, the the winning conditions for each team and we're going to start with the hosts who do have to be very concerned in this game but the Lelos um, they're under threat they know they're under threat they from are. this very good Spanish side they haven't side. fully fired um, this year they haven't haven't quite clicked uh, haven't managed to have their whole team to, available at any given things have been yeah. chopping and changing but uh, they know that these sides have improved as well There's no, they're no, under no illusions about that they were mm. vexed by that draw against Portugal and going like this is this is shocking but you know that three point of, uh, win over, over Rome, Romania where it was in the balance will show them that it's like it's not just that they play badly here these teams have improved yeah um, and they, they certainly haven't decisively 
answered any questions no. with that win. Yeah. What they have done, they showed glimpses in the game in those three tries that they got against Romania, all off first phase, all off scrums. They showed where they have improved. Like the opening try uh, that Niniashvili obviously gets all the headlines because it was his cutting line. But little things like Kaves Aladza just straightening and giving perfectly, yeah. sitting down the, the defense. Kind of simple backline principles yeah, that are there now they're, that they're weren't not, always. They're not turf and passes. They're yeah. running. They're running good lines. They have good shape in their offense, and they're finding cheap tries. Portugal weren't able to give Spain problems on the defensive end. Like they, they're obviously problems in the tie yeah, five. They, 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 they full stop. Really. Yeah, they, they obviously were were able to score some tries. Portugal, but by and large, it was a struggle for them because they weren't able to play with the dynamism and power necessary to break up what was a very powerful uh, Spanish defense. True. Georgia will be looking to right that wrong. They will be looking to move the ball with tempo. Personally, we don't have the squads. I would love to see Lob, Lob, Lobzenids arrested and Aprasidza come in because yeah. I think it gives them the better tempo. They yeah. need to play with that kind of rhythm where they're going over the game Getting line. Getting Sagan smack, to the yeah, wall, exactly. getting guys like that. Smashing rolling. back those contacts and then going out wide. And then he has yeah. good a defender as guys like Jimeno are with Tato in there, with Niniashvili in there, yeah. pivot positions, the two quality centres who can run short lines or give passes yeah. out wide. Shark has on the short ball, little yeah. switch to him can be very dangerous. Try and get Jimeno just overloaded and making more tackles than running sharp lines. You yes, want him yeah. more preoccupied with his hands full on the defensive end. Try and, if you can, target Rue, target uh, Ordas, and make them feel your physicality on on the defense as well and just try and bludgeon these uh, these Spaniards into submission out into yeah, BC it's, it's, on, the, on the offensive end that's what they need to do they yeah, need, it, it, it needs to be rhythmic it needs to be quick and it needs to be powerful like that was the big difference between really what, what, what Portugal failed to do against them they were just stopped behind the gain line if Georgia can get over the gain line yeah. their offense is good enough that they'll be able to find sc- uh, find tries and perhaps go toe yeah, to toe if not honest, better the strike, than the the strike running of um, all of their forwards and backs and their physicality should be good enough with that if if the, you're, you're saying Aprasidza but whoever's at half back manages to move them sharply and then Tato at 10 kicking and, and passing very well and then the key fulcrum as well to the access to the wide channels goes through Nineas really and, and get him involved often yeah. and always then you'll start calling star, star quality problems. star quality yeah. in get really, the good guys really on is. the ball um, <laughs> and yeah he's been fabulous in this in this tournament and to to, to bail them out with cheap tries will be big because they know they are they have a good defence they'll look to contain Spain they'll look to win those contacts it to make to it a, difficult a mess for them in the break, and more of a mess in the breakdown than Portugal were able to provide yes. as well like I, I think Jaligonia is out this week but the, whoever's in the back row the, we know Be- um, Becker Gorgadza back in the squad yeah. Oter Giorgadza back in the squad you might get that classic back row of Giorgadza Saganadza and uh, Becker Gorgadza yeah. like that's a great back row it if is. they can all be firing Saganadza was good last week he was involved he can be better like he's coming and, back uh, into run of games um, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So they'll look to him to be really explosive, powerful counter rooking, stopping the Spanish. But they'll know they'll know that like Spain have a very good offense. They're very they're a very difficult team to stop. They are going to score some tries, and Georgia will know that as yeah, much as they want to solve the problems points. that they've yeah, had, yeah. they're going to want to stick with scoring points. Scoring four tries last week was great. Yeah. They've got to keep that and kind of make going. it a precedent, yeah. make it and continue rolling on on the offensive end yeah. and, and try and keep. Yeah, those scores need to be higher. Like, that's what just, this competition just is because right your now. MO has been to win this game, like bludgeoning them into submission and only win it 16 6, but it's it's dominant 16 6. Yeah. I don't think that's going to cut it here. Those days I, are I gone. think that's not the way this tournament's played out. And then similarly, points on, is a losing score. It is a losing score. Yeah. You're going to need to rack up your four tries, but similarly on the defensive end, you're going to be willing to accept that maybe these guys will score against you because they're good enough, but also big job for guys in the centre, your Sharakadza, to try and shut down yeah. that Jimeno line, but also the access to the wide channels that the Spaniards can find yeah. and, well, and that, that, that battle between Jimeno and Sharakadza on both sides of the ball is going to be fascinating yeah. two captains two class players true um, and uh, it, well I think I think Jimeno might be taking the side obviously uh, with Kersey out for them um, but um, it, like it's just going to be it's just going to be it's box really, off really stuff. good challenge I'd um, say both guys will get some stuff off as well because like I think no Sharakadza runs into Jimeno I think like he goes forward and I think I think the context yeah. probably won that way but it doesn't mean he's not reaching at a shadow if Jimeno cuts a brilliant line yeah. and and Indeed, it's like exactly. it's, and once you know, Spain cut that line, they, yeah. they do tend to open you up, and so the Georgian defense will have to respect that slow uh, tackles catching the ball. But yeah, then the smaller, re- smaller the- tackles, the kind of really physical kind of. Uh, wrestling tackles that Georgia have been, yeah. been it has been a mainstay in this comp is that the ability for when a nice line is cut you grab them you wrap them 
you slowly lift and then put him down and it's like it means yeah. that if the whole tackle takes five seconds and then you're in the ruck and then that takes an extra three or four seconds then suddenly Rue is frustrated or Das has nothing and then he's yeah. kicking and that's what you want to force from, from Spain is those kinds of sets where they're running into traffic and then they're actually slowing up and they're having to kick and then more concerning because the Spanish have such a good kicking game that they're going to they're going to get opportunities in the in the, in the the um, Georgian half and they're going to get line outs in the Georgian half the, the sneaky thing that's happened to Georgia is that their tight five has gone off a cliff in terms of it's quite like Narishvili is still a gnarly scrummager and can get things off as he did against Portugal but it's on those guys to respond and show who they who they can be because on form they are not as good a tight five as Spain have or as Romania have arguably they're not uh, uh, getting consistent penalties at the scrum and they are consistently getting beaten now on both sides of the ball in the line out drive Spain scored two line out malls against the against the Portuguese it is an area more over for the last couple of years they have yeah. wonderfully dynamic prop forwards they they really do there and and uh, off the bench Futu uh, yeah, coming up coming on is just unit. a monster and so Georgia are as are as well matched in that area as they have ever been in this competition I think and perhaps outmatched in that area they have quality elsewhere but their tight five far from being a strength for them actually starts to look like a weakness when you look yeah, at this team it's bizarre that and way they have to show up like, like if they are going to be this this marauding scrummaging team that they like to be this is a big challenge for them yeah it is they've um, got to ride the crowd they'll get the crowd involved in something to cheer on like they were away in Bucharest last mm. week and that and that was that was that was where some of it's tougher to be that physical like if they can get a scrum penalty early doors yeah. then those guys start to rise and maybe some of those Spaniards start but to strength technical shrink. things like the defensive mall though you'd wonder what the answer is they I just don't they don't, they don't yeah, have an answer yeah, right yeah, now they've um, always struggled to have to produce yeah. guys who who look like proper locks some of yes. their locks look like just converted back rows and what you really want in that mall defence is someone with the telescopic limb kind of ability yeah. to get over the top They're, and get at the ball carrier and we haven't seen much of that no, to be honest not just from Georgia just in, in all of these teams well, actually are, to be fair Spain like in Mora are and better, Guinea better have, at stuff have done it in recent yeah, yeah. weeks Romania have done it in yeah, recent actually, weeks actually the, Roma- the, the Spain-Romania game itself was one of the best examples of tier 2 mall defence from both sides that yeah. to be honest you'd never see because normally when a mall gets, gets going from 10 metres out it's just either it's a penalty try or it's a try because yeah. these teams tend not to stop it. But uh, you know that that is true. That is a factor that uh, George will look. Well, they'll have to they'll have to look at because it's going to could be decisive. Fronting up, have to front up. Easier to front up at home though. I will say that you can write like one or two moments can get that crowd involved and that can be be a lift for ye and and a shrink for the opposition. And they got to make those things happen. Like when you get Nuniashvili's hands on the ball and he makes something happen, suddenly the noise ripples up and then suddenly you feel a bit taller in that even those type five forwards. So it's about kind of the push and pull and riding that to a good effect, which Georgia do know well. They know how to make pressure tell in that into Belize and know how to turn it into a, a furnace that's very very tough to conquer and even Portugal with a great performance only managed to squeeze a draw out of it yeah. so they're going to be confident of that but a draw would be enough for Spain it would and we are going to look at it now from the, the point of view of the away side and I suppose first and foremost the, the thing that would give you pause as great as the scenes were post-match was that team's adrenaline of sculling <laughs> yeah, points yeah, yeah, yeah. up in front of their fans? That's another I mean, factor. That those like, boys went. Like, you don't want to have a nice. Yeah. On you Sunday. don't want to say it from a Georgian point yeah. of view, but you do also want to say like these guys have already qualified. Let's let's make them look silly in yeah, this one. And yeah. it could be the case from a Spanish point of view that That's it's a week it, like, after the night before. Exactly. Um, it's it's one of those things where it could go either way. I mean, they had mm. they obviously had a night on on Sunday. And rightly so. Oh, yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah. I mean, they've they, got to celebrate the good times as much as being a rugby Europe champions would be amazing for Spain. It is. It is very much the second secondary. It would be to, a bonus. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. They, they have done their main job, and so it can kind of it can go one of two ways, I suppose. You can you, you, you can suffer from the lose, adre- roll in, and be actually really good because the pressure's yeah, exactly. off, or you know, be hung over, <laughs> just <laughs> arriving flat. Yeah. And yeah, if they're yeah. flat, like because the energy that they brought last week was suffocating oh, yeah, the Portuguese. Yeah. It was like they were off on both sides of the ball. They were just sprinting. Yeah. They were, and you know, um, it'll take a similar effort to yes. stick Georgia into Belize, which is an effort that Portugal did bring on week one yeah. and weren't able to replicate the week after in Romania, even yeah, which was yeah. a tough ask as well. well we've seen quite um, a bit of that this year yeah. aside. Uh, uh, slumping uh, following a big performance yeah, yeah. and it's so they have to back that things like that up Spain. there's no yeah. gap week at all and they did just qualify so that's the first second and third port of call is like are we going to arrive to Tbilisi to the pitch because like if we don't then it doesn't matter what we talk about the kicking game or yeah, whatever like yeah, it, exactly like no, if we get, we're getting yeah, blown away yeah. in the contact yeah. area it's all superfluous yeah, it's all exactly yeah, yeah. Um, so that is first second and third port of call is just kind of dust yourselves off from last and, week and arrive to the try pitch try and bring that same energy they are missing Quercy this week but they still have that wonderful tight five 
five that they that they played last week. Can they get up, get be explosive off the line, make big yeah. tackles, and and get the Georgians thinking? Because if if they can turn this game into a kind of a kicking fest where where Georgia can't get anything off in the midfield and they're winning those contacts on the inside, Jimeno's shooting shutting down the outside, and Georgia aren't getting the physical contacts on the inside that they want. Then all of a sudden, if you're forcing them to kick, they will back themselves in that exchange. It's true. Um, and yeah, that's, yeah. that's where that's where they've gone to work. Like Ordas sitting in the backfield, pinging 50-22s. Tato's been great. I mean, that is a good kicking battle, but Ordas has been the best 10 in this competition it's this true. year. Yeah, I yeah, know um, he has. He's been, been pretty flawless. And Rui has been fabulous as well, as much yes. as the two halfbacks that, that are rotating for, for Georgia are excellent as well. Rui has been fabulous at setting a tempo. And so you want to see that. You want to mm. see them those halfbacks bringing those forwards onto the ball, asking good questions with good passes of, of, of all the defenders of kind of uh, linchpins your shark has is you want to try and overload these guys and occupy defenders in the back row for Georgia get their hands full get them on the deck and then go quickly if they can yeah setting a different tempo to what Georgia would like when they have the ball in hand is a key thing and uh, yeah it, it depends again goes back to that first point is like are they going to play with that tempo but if they do then they definitely have the tools out wide to cause some problems to these guys some problems yeah, score yeah. some tries there's nothing like them when they cut when they cut through the line their yeah. support play and offloading is excellent I mean it's they scored tries with five six seven offloads and um, yeah. they, they do keep the ball alive very well they pick good lines off each other they're very good at turning line breaks into tries themselves and yeah. uh, both of these offenses will fancy it i am interested though to see this tight five battle i mean we touched yeah, on it with Spanish georgia props are like, awesome though like aren't they where's the, it's yeah, a yeah, great it's, it's always the barometer that you judge yourselves on in this game but like john zavala picking that ball through through the middle of the portuguese yeah. fernando lopez as well has been class a few two off the bench has been a rampaging monster all it's tournament true. you and look yet, at and mora yet. and guillaume in the locks shutting down the romanian mall like it's not yeah. even there like if they can put that kind of performance together against a georgian tight five that has been struggling to to play accurately like winning that matchup that's something that the Georgians get will get the Georgians head spinning because true. They, if they decisively get on top of them in the mall and perhaps even in the scrum with their explosive brilliant uh, uh, tight forwards then that is just a new picture for the Georgians in Tbilisi yes, and, and I don't think it's far-fetched I really no, don't no. I think they're excellent players I definitely don't as much um, as we do always highlight like if you're yeah, a, a tight head in this tournament yes. away in Tbilisi is your toughest task for and sure. that usually is the case and it probably will be again here yeah. but it's not one that they shouldn't be shy shouldn't be shy about they can go there with some pedigree and with some some evidence based kind of confidence that's just like you know we can have a cut at these guys let's go for it let's go and try and win a tournament take some, take some silverware by claim and a big scalp in Tbilisi it's not that far fetched it does start with that type 5 battle though if that goes in reverse for Spain I don't see Rue and Ordas mm-hmm. and Jimeno and the guys out wide being able to to just arrest that on their own if they're getting no, bullied. No, indeed, in that and the, the other the other area, the other point of concern that they have to adjust defensively is that the Georgians play with a lot of depth and width these days, and they and will they have, try and they get have wide runners out roaming there, roaming yeah. back row yeah. forwards on the wings, and so, so guys, someone guys, needs to be tasked yeah, to stop them. You yeah. got to put them down. You got to stop the ball out there. Yeah, um, it's easier said than done, and it it like it'll involve some really good clutch one v one tackles oh, in a what, bit of space. What does it look like when Mingyan or Jordi Jorba are one v one against Saganadze? Yeah. Are they just going to be turfed yeah. and then are they at least break. going to put him down or yeah. hold him or scrag yeah. him or are they just going to be a speed bump because um, yeah. if they're just a speed bump that'll that'll be that'll hurt it will it'll and, be and yeah, that's yeah. when like you know if the, if, the, if, the, if the Georgians do get on top of them and they do get plenty of red zone entrances that's when you might see, start to see their bad habits again and the yeah, especially if they are a little and, tired and yeah, stuff yeah, yeah that's yeah. where like silly tired plays and to be honest like as much as their mall defence has been good as well I have seen them give away a card for, for a mall that was reversed and it's, it's exactly, like, it's like illegal once they sacking, get around the corner yeah, yeah. Just ah, yeah. yank down, <laughs> yeah, play, indeed, play, yeah, or no, run exactly. around the side and tackle the yeah, guy on the ball, indeed, or just like, something that the ref can't help but card you for. Yeah, indeed, yeah. <laughs> it's no, like so try not to do that. To be honest, yes. Um, it's e- again, all of this is easier said than done, and all of it is the caveat of like which Spain will we see? Will we see them arriving with that hunger, that passion to try and go and claim silverware, to make a game for the ages, yes, game yeah, for the yeah. ages out in Tbilisi, which is fair enough. And if they can do that, I'm all excited for it. But what's also fair enough and is is an acceptable alternative route is that they arrive and they look a little bit Flash. of like a yeah. shadow of themselves from last week and you'd be like where's the Spain that was last week and it's like to be honest you know <laughs> they celebrated because yeah, they're in the World Cup and exactly. um, so, so I'm not sure which one we're expecting to see but uh, to be honest it is in Spain's campus to whether we see a really really good contest or or 
one of those just Georgian wins that we are normally more accustomed to. I think that that hinges yeah. on the performance of Spain. Yeah, I agree. I do yeah. agree with you. I think we're in for a game again with tries. I think yeah. both sides to clear 20 points. I think yeah. that's a safe bet. I would hope so, yeah. yeah. We're getting that's into springtime now, even in Tbilisi yeah, yeah. as well, all around. So I'm, I'm thinking conditions are good. These teams are good. Let's go. It's happening yeah, yeah. consistently. The, these offenses are great, and the defenses still have some catching up to do. Yeah, it's but, true. Um, yeah, I think I think um, for, for for sure we're look, we're in for a high scoring game. One for I, the neutrals. You yeah, want to be I, enjoying I, watching. I do rate Georgia, but this Spanish side is as legit a threat to their crown as 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 kings of this competition as there's been. I think since twenty fifteen Romania, I, think, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But even since like yeah, for as long as this Georgian team has been a thing really pushing at the door of the Six Nations I think this is as, as big a challenge to their crown as they've had Spain obviously runners up a couple of years can they get their first win and win and what would that do to shake the order of, of, of play in rugby Europe I don't know Yeah. but um, I think I'm predicting a Georgian win I think with that adrenaline dump I think the Georgians are, are due a big performance and a big response I'm not on board with the with the Georgian fans who think that my Sashvili is a terrible coach and they need to get they need to uh, uh, start fixing things and that they're in a disastrous state I think their offence has come on leaps and bounds and that is going to stand that's them what in they, this that's game. what they were talking um, about in the off season in the last couple of years knowing that you know, yeah. with all the other teams talking about World Cup qualification yeah. Georgia weren't they were talking about when we get to the next World Cup we actually want to be able to fire some shots which involves improving yeah. the offence because they, they, they were embarrassed at the last World Cup in that very similar group that they're going to be in yeah. by just their lack of yeah, they're, ability they're playing to, Fiji and yeah. they, conceded, they concede two quick tries and they have nothing, nothing by way to, of riposte yeah, exactly. which this Georgian team would have a riposte which is, which is infinitely better but yeah they are going to have to pick up I think a set piece coach of some kind a set piece mm. expert to come in between now and the yeah, World Cup because it's a mess at the moment it is it um, is and that is with yeah. their traditional strength I, I'm kind of seeing something similar I think as much as I'd like to see all guns blazing Spain and all guns blazing Georgia and I think that's a cracking game that we might see at a, a Spain that are a little bit a little bit shy of what we saw last week and for the last few weeks as well and we might see uh, Tbilisi being just at, at one one bridge too far as far as things to conquer maybe I'm wrong because momentum huge and they are riding a momentum wave in but I think I'm back in Georgia at home to get the get the win and secure the Rugby Europe Championship once again this time and that's what I see happening anyway absolutely who you got let, let us know down below absolutely, absolutely. Who's, who you got in this one who's going to take the Rugby Europe crown how have you found this wonderful wonderful tournament I hope that you've taken our advice and watched these games and a word yeah. to the wise watch them live because they will spoil the heck out of them on their streaming they site will. if you don't and uh, a word uh, to any Rugby Europe people involved in that website Stop doing that yes. if you're watching. Stop doing that. You don't. You have to actively change the stream to include the scoreline in it. Just don't. Yeah. Just say you're in Spain yeah. or you're in Georgia. Oh, once, once, once you click on Rugby Europe TV on your website, there should be no spoilers. No yeah. room for spoilers in there. It's a pretty basic thing. Yeah. But anyway, I digress. Let us know what you think. How you think this is going in the comments down below. But for now, we're going to move on. Absolutely. Listen, guys, we have actually run out of time for this show, and we've also run out of road with the camera, yeah. as you can well see. It's been a bit of a mess, unfortunately. Um, things, have, things have not always gone our way, and it's been definitely a weird week, all yeah. things considered. True. But we did get the main of the show done. We're going to have to park club footy for now and park the news of the week. We'll be back with all of that juju. Congratulations to Michael Check on his appointment as Argentina coach. We'll dig into that next week. Um, but it would be remiss of us, I think, ahead of, this, uh, ahead of wrapping up the show, not to mention at least the under-26 nations. True. Yes. Um, yeah, we had three great games last weekend. France beating Wales 47-15, Italy beating Scotland 27-13, that great Italian under-20 uh, team yeah. doing the job on the Scots. And then Ireland. Oh, what oh, a game that was. 42-27 to 27 yeah, over King. the English. What a, what a couple of finish at Saul King looking dynamic. Yeah. What a way to Bal score Brigham, a bonus uh, point. Balbriggan yeah. Rugby Football Club. Yeah, Balbriggan like. Bal are hardy books. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. like any skittling Englishman and carrying them over the trial line. Always fun to see. Um, yeah, so Ireland obviously after, after the penultimate round sitting on top with the Grand Slam still to play for after a bonus point win doing the mirror imaging of the uh, of the main tournament quite well in this one apart from obviously the fact that it's Fr Ireland on top and France just in second yeah. but uh, Ireland on 19 points France 16 uh, England 12 uh, th those make up the top 3 and then Italy on 8 points Wales on 5 and Scotland on 1 that's how it stands going into the final uh, final round very credible showing from, from Italy they are, they are going to do a, a Super Sunday to match yeah. the Super Saturday and so kick off they have the early game as a same as Super Saturday only in the in the uh, uh, under 20s uh, Wales and Italy on the Sunday at 2pm 
great chance for Italy to secure a winning record that would be amazing yeah. um, then Ireland plays Scotland for the Grand Slam yeah. if they can get the and win the there and the Triple Crown as well because yeah. they can't win a Grand Slam without winning a Triple Crown true, if you're there. true enough true enough and if they can beat the, t- the bottom side on the log they will win the tournament which would be great for the young lads so best luck to them and then it'll finish at 8pm on Sunday with France against England yes, on their Super Crunch. Yeah. indeed um, which will be a great, a great game unto itself um, yeah. so yeah it's um, been a great tournament box lots of running rugby lots of good rugby as well and, and yeah just delighted to see the Irish play uh, be as stellar as it is probably the highlight has been that uh, that clutch win against the French that was a high high quality game uh, yeah. in France between France and, and, and Ireland to dig it out France looked on top in moments but Ireland just managed to find the tries to dig it out so yeah massive uh, best of luck to the Irish boys ahead of this week obviously from our own bias point of view but congrats to all the under 20s as well and uh, listen sorry for the for the hodgepodge kind of show this week unfortunately uh, it, it is what it is but please do be sure to join us next week. Uh, we're going to have a review of all of the Six Nations action. We're also going to get back on the horse as far as club footy is concerned, news of the week is concerned. Um, so if you are interested at all in hearing that, please do subscribe, uh, hit the bell to get notified when we upload. Uh, like the videos as well if you can. And of course, uh, leave your thoughts down below in the comments section. Yes, absolutely. So with that, with all that said, I think we're going to wrap up this show rather briefly with uh, skipping through, skip to the end as we say. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we're going to sign off with that one. So see you next week week folks bye bye